High hopes and high expectations. The Cardinals migrating back here to Benedetti Worldly Stadium for the home opener, taking on Wash U. The action coming up next on NCTV 17. Gallo again. This time breaks free in the outside. The quarterback on fourth and 19. Bauer steps up. Picked off. Tommy Sawyer. And hurdles him in and knocked out of bounds at the nine yard line. Kaminsky, touchdown. Good with the feet. Get past the first down marker. In the air this time. And again, Cardinals right there. Sack. Lofts it up to Rose. And Rose hauls it in. Alex Rose. Pump bacon loses the football. The Cardinals will come to Holy Cow. Gorgeous day here on the campus of North Central College. Welcome into this NCTV 17 production of Cardinal Football. Kevin Jackman alongside former Cardinal Grant Sabo. And Grant, this should be a pretty good game. Both teams enter 1 0, and they're now conference rivals as well. This game takes on some extra meaning. Yeah, there have been some pretty historic matchups in the last 15 years or so between North Central and Wash U, uh, some of which coming down to the wire. Um, I believe Wash U has gotten the better of North Central once, but they've been in the game quite a number of times, and there have been some, some nail biters there. So the fact that we get to see them year in and year out now is going to be a real treat. Now, Grant, coming off a 70-14 to 14 win, this Cardinal team is ranked fifth in the country. It looks like they have the pieces for maybe a title push. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Cardinals did lose a fair bit to graduation. There were some holes in the offensive line and the defensive secondary. Uh, questions to be answered coming into this season, but last week, uh, after you hang 70 on a team and, and are managed, managed to keep them out of the end zone uh, as well as they did, those questions, I believe, seem like they have been answered, and we'll see today against a quality Wash U team. Now, maybe the only question that Brock Rutter hasn't answered yet is if he can be the National Player of the Year because this quarterback is one of the best in Cardinal program history. Let's break down the tape from last week against Lake Forest. He had some fantastic throws, starting with this one to Michael Spickus. The chemistry that Rutter's been able to develop over the last two years with his receivers is unbelievable. On this play, you'll see the receiver get jammed not once but twice. Rutter releases the football and is able to anticipate where his man is going to be despite the fact that there were two defenders in his way. On this play, you'll see Rudder showcase some of his mechanics using a pump fake to get the defense to respect where he wants to throw the ball, allowing Rose to come wide open. Rudder also places the ball where only Rose can get it. Here you see last year's number one target, Andrew Kaminsky, run a beautiful arrow route and get wide open in the end zone. That's an easy pitch and catch for a quarterback like Rudder. And the throw even more impressive on the run, moving towards his throwing side. Now, let's go to another component of this offense, a guy that won't get a lot of attention just because he's on the offensive line. But we're going to give him some. Ricky Sturba, who started 10 games as a freshman. He's back as now a junior, and he's looking awfully good at center. A word that doesn't often come to mind when you think about offensive linemen is agility. Furthermore, the center, usually the brains of the offensive line, is not necessarily the most agile, but... On this play, they actually pull the center, which is atypical in most offensive schemes. And you can see him get down the field and get in the face of some of the smaller defensive backs and linebackers. This is unbelievable agility for somebody his size. Watch how he engages and stays engaged. A lot of times, when offensive linemen pull and get down the field, they, they don't know what to do. They don't break down. They don't run their feet. But look at his hands. He hand fights. It, it's unbelievable. He's Every showing, showcasing every bit of the athleticism that the defensive backs are exuding. On this block, he has a combination block with his left guard. And even though the play is running away from him, once the guard takes over that block, he's able to rock it up to the next level and get in the face of a linebacker who had committed the wrong way. And he punishes that guy. Now let's go to the defensive side of the football. And one guy who was expected to be on this Cardinal football team until two days before training camp began. Tommy Hyland is a transfer, and he's now looking to make a big impact on that defensive line. Now, Hyland came in expecting to play on the outside, but due to injury, had to move in. He's playing a three technique in the four-man front that the Cardinals run. 
because of his size and speed and agility, he is an unbelievably effective three technique, much in the mold of the Chicago Bears' Tommy Harris. Here you'll see Highland showcase his strength in which he's able to reestablish a line of scrimmage two yards in the offensive backfield. That is an unbelievable disruption for whatever the opposing offense is trying to do. Highland's hands are also incredible. He's able to get inside leverage on the offensive lineman and execute a textbook push-pull maneuver that topples the offensive lineman after setting him off balance. Now, after graduating most of that defensive line, it was a veteran-laden group last year. Guys like Highland, Isaiah Ziegler, who's a freshman, they're going to have to step up and fill that role this year. Now, week one, they filled that position. They dominated Lake Forest 70-14. to Let's go back to last week and take a look at how that game shaped up. North Central QB Brock Rutter returns as the starter for a third consecutive year, but it's the first game Damugalo starts in the regular season. And look at him go. After scoring 12 TDs last year, Magalu could rack up even more absurd stats as the bell cow back. Now near the goal line, NCC opening up the scoring by confusing the Foresters and me too. Rutter takes it in, first touchdown of the season, seven to go in the first quarter. Lake Forest responding and with a little trickery. The reverse end around winds up with Chase Allen and he finds Pater. We're all netted up at sevens, 418 to go in the first. Cardinals on the march again. Rudder given plenty of time in the pocket and then zips it over the middle. Michael Spickus is said to have the best hands on the team. Yeah, I'd say so. 15-yard pickup and also a first down. And from there, North Central draws up a play for new weapon Cam Moore. And did the Cardinals just make bunk beds because there's so much room for activities. 14-yard gain on the ground. After breaking off a 20-yard run, freshman running back Ethan Greenfield is at it again. Taking the rock off the edge, slipping one arm tackle, and then diving inside the pylon. North Central now leads 14 to 7, minute 30 to go in the opening quarter. Following the Foresters score on the previous drive, the NCC defense comes up with a stop to begin the second quarter. DJ Workenthane on the tackle. But it's full steam ahead for the North Central offense. Rudder fakes to Moore and instead launches one deep over the middle to Andrew Kaminsky. Big gainer puts them right back into the red zone. From there, the Cardinals turn and hand off to Megalu, and he does the rest, rumbling his way to a 12-yard score and a 21-7 advantage in the second quarter. Next possession, same score. Rudder to Svickus in the flat, and he's throwing. Lofts it up to Kaminsky down the sideline, and the sophomore toe taps, hauling in a 38-yard reception. And they cap that drive. Rudder rolling right and finding Kaminsky in the end zone, taking a commanding 28-7 lead, six to go in the half. But the half is far from over. After Workenthine forces a fumble that Zach Butler recovers, it's Magalu once again punching the clock. 36 yards out, he barrels his way into the end zone. 125 yards, three scores in the game for number 28. The half still hasn't come to a close, and guess what? More points coming NCC's way. Rudder finds Svickus behind the defense up the sideline, and the Cardinals carry a 42-7 lead into the break. So maybe the second will bring more success for the Foresters offense, or not. Lane Brinkman forces and recovers the fumble, and North Central then cruises to a 70-14 season opening win. Up next, Wash U at home on Saturday inside Benedetti Worley Stadium. Now 70-14 is all fine and pretty, but week one is in the books. Now week two is upon us, and Wash U is traveling to Benedetti Worley Stadium. Coach Jeff Thorne stopped by the red zone, and let's hear his thoughts on the Bears. This is a decent team, and last year you, you struggled in the first quarter against them. What are you expecting here in 2018 from this uh, Bears unit? They're more than a decent team. I think they're a very good football team. They're, they're disciplined. They don't make mistakes. They're, you know, Wash U's academic requirements are, are very high. Mm -hmm. So you're dealing with really intelligent kids. As a result of that, you're not going to see very many mental errors. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, they're very, very good athletes, too. Uh, their quarterback and their punter is a Barrington High School kid who we really recruited hard mm -hmm. out of high school. Um, so I know that athletically they're going to test us. Yeah. Uh, they do a, a really good job on both the offensive and defensive lines and, you know, playing with pad level and using their hands the right way. So our work is, is definitely cut out for us. We're going to have to be at the top of our game. And now, fans, we ask that you please rise as you are able. Here to honor America by performing our national anthem, is the North Central College Cardinal Athletic Band under the direction of Dr. Sean Kelly.
Kevin Jackman, Grant Sabo. It's the North Central Cardinals and the Wash U Bears here on NCTV 17. Cardinals 1-0, Bears 1-0. North Central comes into this game ranked fifth in the country. And as we mentioned in the pregame show, Grant, a lot of expectations placed on this team, and they ride on the quarterback, and that's Brock Rutter who will try and lead this ship. And there he is on the sideline hitting up uh, to try and face this Bears team that, you know, last year gave them some fits in the first quarter. You know, they absolutely did. And Wash U has been historically a very strong team. This is going to be a good early test for the Cardinals. Uh, and they're going to have to come out firing. Wash U is, is not going to lay down and take this. They're going to uh, they're going to fight, and it's a very strong and a very good program. Dakota Premines will be back to try and return this kickoff. Pretty unusual kickoff formation here. They'll probably break this. Yeah. The kicker is Joe Rogan for Wash U. Joe Rogan, I'm a huge fan of his podcast. 15 minutes up on the clock. And here comes the opening kickoff. Short and fair caught at the 16 yard line. Interesting decision. That was Spencer Ebersole, a linebacker, not taking any chances. Yeah, no, that's fine. If you're not confident, I'd rather hold on to the football. I, he did, I think, back up just a little bit to get that. I, I might have gone forward and let the back row guys take that so you can advance it a bit. But regardless, we've got a very potent Cardinal offense ready to take the reins here. Brock Rutter in this offense. Doing some major damage last week, and that was a fantastic game that they put together against Lake Forest. 70 points put up, eight rushing touchdowns. Yeah, that's unbelievable. First play is going to be a deep pass to Cam Moore, and just barely over his head. And... That man right there, number 15, he is going to be an instrumental part of this offense this season. He comes in and a fantastic player in high school. He uh, was one of the top players in the conference and the DVC, looked like a surefire prospect, and now he's on this Cardinal roster and looking to do some big-time big, th big -time things. You know, interesting story about him. I had heard that we were getting a good receiver transfer coming in, and alerted you and the sports director Justin Cornwell to this fact but I didn't know the name of the of the receiver transfer just that it was a big name a rumor I had heard and that Justin, rumor came true well Justin said the only person I could think of that it would be from this area is Cam Moore but I don't think it's him because he's too good to transfer he's too good <laughs> yeah and here we have him third and two on tap make that fourth and two now the Cardinals will have to punt on this opening series yeah, we talked to Coach Jeff Thorne on the red zone, and one of the things he told me was he believed that Cam Moore was arguably the top player in the conference, and that was a conference that included Isaiah Robertson, a two-way player that wound up at Notre Dame. So you know you have a pedigree of being a very good player when you've coaches saying that. That's a special talent. Punts by Zane Ledico. Caught and almost coughed up a fantastic play on the team's unit. That was Corey Blair, Boy, a what linebacker. coverage by Blair. And way to way to break down and make that play from the side so you're not violating. I mean, they, don't, they don't use the term halo anymore, but you, know, you can't interfere with the catch. He let him catch it clean. But, man, he was right there to swallow him up as soon as he did. So now we get our first look at Johnny Davidson, the quarterback for the Wash U Bears, a 5'11", 195-pound junior, played at Barrington High School. And this is a guy that North Central recruited hard. They wanted to get this guy on campus. A very athletic quarterback can run and also can toss the deep ball. He'll hand off for the first play of the game, the first play of the drive for the Bears. It's a three-yard carry up to the 30-yard line. And this Cardinal defense looks like a very young team with potential. And, uh, well, they played up to the task last week. A no-huddle offense as the Bears try to go up-tempo. And a quick bubble screen and caught and a lot of room to maneuver on this near side. It fumbled out of bounds, but not before a hefty pickup 
And the pass hauled in by Mitchell Groen, the tight end. Boy, I saw an unbelievable block on the end by the Bears receiver number 29, Jason Singer, to really spring that for some extra yardage. Fantastic edge, ed, job edge blocking there. Four receivers set and a throw batted up in the air. Jump ball and big collision at the 45 yard line, but it is hauled in by the running back, John Fisher, going up and getting that ball, making sure that's not an interception. Yeah, what a really athletic play there. Could have been a disaster for the Bears on their opening drive. Guys come loose and wrapped up in the backfield. Jack, Jake Beasley almost brought him down for the tackle, slowed him up just enough for the gang tackle at the 42. Cardinals reading and digesting that play to perfection. You know what I like about Beasley there is that he missed the tackle, got back up, and then got back in on it after he missed it. That a lot of guys, if they miss a tackle, they're upset with themselves, they're, you know, they pound the ground, they, they take themselves out of the play, but that's not what Beasley did there. Beasley, the wide receiver last year, turned cornerback this year. His skills off the charts when it comes to athleticism. Pass over the middle and behind the intended target. That was an errant pass out of the hand of Davidson. And that was actually a blessing that he missed that football because the linebackers were about to come up and destroy him. That was Alex Failinger and a player down, and that's Singer. He's all the way at the 40-yard line inside Cardinal territory away from the play. I didn't see any contact over there. You hope that's not a non-contact injury because those typically – Seem to be pretty serious. Well, he's off under his own power and doesn't appear to be in too much pain, so hopefully we'll see him on the field again. He's a dynamic playmaker. Jason Singer, a 5'11 wide receiver who does a bulk of their damage in the passing game. But now it's a 4th and 11 for the Bears, and the Cardinals will drop back Andrew Kaminsky. By the way, Davidson not only is the oh, quarterback, but also... The punter, and Kaminsky's getting yeah, they, the, booted from the field. The ref kicked him off the field. Some sort of uh, equipment violation. I don't know if they said that he's out for a play. He's I, out for a play. Sorry, I talked over what the ref was saying. Jonathan Mitchell, who returns kicks, he trots out there. Now let's see something, kid. Mitchell, just a five foot four freshman. 5'4". And he calls for the fair catch and brings Fine. it in with yeah. traffic in front of him. Yeah, yeah, that was a smart call. Smart call. You know, a lot of times when you put a freshman out there, they're very eager to make something happen. And so they'll be in situations like that and say, ah, I can make that guy miss. And sometimes they get hit and sometimes some not good results happen. But that was a very heady play so to make that fair catch call there for uh, such a young guy. So the second offensive series on tap for this Cardinal offense. 12.20 to go in the first quarter. Three and out the first time. Remember last year when the Cardinals traveled down to St. Louis, they exited the first quarter trailing 10 nothing as Rudder goes over the middle and completes the pass to Andrew Kaminsky up the sideline and a gain of 17 on the play up to the 43, make that 44 yard line. Good pitch and catch and that's one of uh, Kaminsky's strong suits is the ability to gain yards after making the reception. Yeah, he's a spectacular route runner also. He really runs some, some fantastic uh, routes and is able to find that green grass and settle down there. Thrown to the outside, Moore hauls it in. And a nine yard gain on the play. And this is where Coach Jeff Thorne and Brad Spencer can lick their chops. Second and short, the playbook is wide open. Absolutely. And the great thing about them is, is they're so dynamic. You can even be in their offense and practicing with them time after time, and you still don't know what they're going to call. You have no idea. In the backfield, Don Mugalu, three receivers set and also a tight end, but a flag will blow this one dead. False start. That one called against the Cardinals left guard, Sharmore Clark, who returns for his second season starting, and there's the starting lineup. You see Clark there on the bottom. He returns along with Colton Bocknecht, and then the receivers across the top, a talented group, Kaminsky, Moore. You also have Michael Sfikis, who has what many on this team believe to be the best hands on this roster. Rudder, pump fakes, goes to the near side. There's Sfikis, brings it in, picks up the first down to the 45-yard line inside Bears territory, and the Cardinals have begun the march towards the red zone here in the home opener. You know, the Cardinals were in max protection there. They left tight end Alex Rose in to block. 
a lot of times tight ends don't get a lot of reps pass blocking. He did a phenomenal job on an island against their defensive end protecting Rudder. That was a really great job by Rose. First and 10 from the 45 and a screen outside to Kaminsky who gets bottled up in the backfield and a loss of three on the play. You know, Rose last week was a major contributor in the passing game and that was really for the first time. We saw glimpses of it last year, especially in the St. John's game. He had that deep reception that set up one of the scores in that playoff contest. But if Rose can become a dynamic factor in the passing game, that opens up even more options for this offensive-minded coach and Jeff Thorne. Yeah, and if he can pass block like that, who knows what he's going to do. Second and 12 after the loss of yards on the bubble screen. Rudder making checks at the line. He has 10 seconds on the play clock. Has enough time, throws to the outside and off the hands of Moore. So brings up third and long. Let's see what the Cardinal offense draws up for this play. They have to get to the 34 yard line if they want to convert. And yeah, Washu making personnel changes here, bringing in, uh, I believe, an extra defensive back. Third and 12, and the Cardinals again roll with. A wide set, three receivers on the near side, one on the far, Corey Hardem of the extra wide out. And the throw over the middle, complete to Sfikis. I'm not sure if he got to the sticks initially. He's trying for the second effort. He'll be about a half a yard shy when it's all said and done. Great effort by Sfikis to try and pick up those extra few inches, but it will bring up fourth down, but they're in the territory where it might be, it might make sense to go for it here. I know in, well, when I played, Coach Jeff Thorne was more of a go-for-it guy, but he was also the offensive coordinator, so it's kind of his job to do that. He's been a little bit more prudent lately, although this is a great time at the 35-yard line to do exactly what he's about to do. Fourth and one, Magalu the deep back. He'll get the tote and gets the first down. Mission accomplished, and the Cardinals move the chains up to the 32-yard line they go. Good time to talk about this offensive line. We spotlighted Ricky Sturba in the pregame show, but this is a unit that has Colton Bockneck on one edge, Jake Fiedler on the other. There's some inexperience, but also a lot of talent along this front five. Yeah, when you've got agile, big, strong offensive linemen, the, the world is your oyster offensively. You can get away with subpar skill players, and they don't even have subpar skill players. They've got amazing skill players, so that's when you can hang 70 on people. Stoppage in play, a substitution being made by Wash U. The Bears coming off an opening week win against the University of Chicago 24-17, but had a bye week in between that game and this game, so two weeks to prepare for this North Central Cardinal squad. Is Rudder looking deep, going deep, has Fickus in the back of the end zone and cannot pluck it out of midair. Great coverage on the back end of that defense. Combining to try and make that stop, Justin DiCarlo on the back end breaks it up. Boy, I, both of those defenders were right there and both of them did a fantastic job. I thought for a second that they were beat, but they really got on their horse and kind of made that play happen. One going for the ball and one going for the player. And that was beautiful coverage. Not a bad throw from Brock Rudder, maybe just a hair too late. Mm -hmm. As Magalu gets the carry and he is swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. First man in there was Clayton Ferris, a six foot one, 235 pound defensive tackle. And Wash U defensive line is really kind of uh, showing what they're made of there. Not allowing any kind of push from the NCC O line. Bugalu will sub out, and for the first time today, we see the freshman running back, Ethan Greenfield. Rudder Looking dragged right. down from behind on third and 10. No loss of yards, but nevertheless, a big play converted by this Wash U defense, and coming up with the stop, Alex Harvey. Interesting to see what North Central is going to do here. They're going to try for a field goal. They are. It will be a field goal attempt, a 48-49 yard field goal for the freshman. This is Derek Juka, who did not attempt a field goal last week. So welcome to, uh, to college. Your first attempt is from 49 yards out. It's got enough length on it, and it has plenty, and it is good. Juka connects from just inside 50, and the Cardinals are on the board leading 3-0. 
fantastic. You know, when you've got a great kicker for many years, like Liam Crotty, as North Central has had for the last several, when a, when a good kicker graduates, you always wonder who's waiting in the wings. Now, I know Liam, I believe, is on staff here. So uh, his tutelage, I'm sure, is helping the new young kicker in massive situations like that one. 8.23 to go in the opening quarter. It'll be interesting to see what, uh, what Wash U does here in response. The offense has been kind of stagnant. The defense for the Cardinals, well, they've got a lot of very talented pieces here. You got two new cornerbacks, and Jake Beasley and Brandon Lindmark, uh, Lindmark on the outside at cornerback, but that linebacking core and DJ working theme, Ben Wong and Alec Wolf. Those guys are athletic, and they have a lot of talent, especially Workenthien, who comes in as one of those preseason All-Americans. We'll see what that unit has in store for their second series on the field in just a moment, but it's Juka who will get this game back underway after his massive boot from 49 yards. I can't believe Workenthien's a senior. Seems like he's been on this team forever and also not for not for very long either. Yeah, <laughs> he's always been behind some sort of really good linebacker. Last year, the last two years, Tommy Sora, but now he's he's the main attraction in that linebacking core. Great return set up down to the 34-yard line goes Alex Fingler, and the Wash U offense will have prime field position to start their second drive. You know, in spite of the fact that there are other linebackers on the team like Sora, Warkenthien has always been an attraction in and of himself. In and of himself. Now, if you're ostensibly the, the Scotty Pippen to a Michael Jordan, you know, but, but still making your presence felt like that, that's that's pretty impressive. Warkenthien with quite the career already, he has skyrocketed up the record boards. But here comes Davidson on for his second series. Keeps the ball himself off the right edge and picks up a solid chunk of yards. To the 41 yard line he goes, a gain of seven on the play. Boy, Wash U's right tackle, Sorg, did a really nice job kind of influencing that block on the end there. It was a really kind of neat setup. He didn't have to seal it traditionally. He was able to influence the defensive end to suck down. Second and short, Davidson over the middle. It is intercepted by the former wide receiver, Jake Beasley. How about that play? Undercuts the route and takes it right away from the wide receiver. Well, he came right underneath that thing in a big hurry, and he's showing off those former wide receiver hands. Boy, I, and he was a fair amount behind him, too, showcasing a little bit of speed there on top of it. Nick Watts, the intended target, and how about Matt Sutherland blowing up the back end of that play to make sure the wide receiver doesn't factor into it. Beasley with the interception on the Cardinal offense back out onto the field. Electrifying play has the Cardinal faithful pumped up, and now the defense celebrating on the sideline as the offense goes to work. Bugalu the back, three receivers and a tight end. Take that back, that's the freshman running back, Terrence Hill, who rumbles his way to a nine yard gain. A heck of a job and a heck of an effort there by the running back. He got several yards after he was initially contacted in the backfield, he was able to pick up probably 12. It broke several tackles on that, falls forward. Now the production missing from Austin Brunig who for four years was a steady mainstay on this starting offensive unit as Hill remains in the game. Last year, up the ante, almost 1,300 yards rushing, another 400 through the air, combined for 19 touchdowns. And Hill picks up the first down, but this is what a great coaching staff and a great program does. They lose a senior like Austin Brunig at running back, they have somebody in the wing and Don Mugalu to replace him, but then they bring in freshmen to step in and contribute right away. Yeah, and in nationally ranked programs like this, it is strange to have freshmen come in and be such key contributors. You have to be a pretty special talent in order to be able to do that. Rudder drops back on first and 10. Has a man in the flat, completes it to Greenfield, the running back, and he picks up a first down as well. So two straight chain movers compliments of freshmen and this Cardinal team Jeff Thorne doesn't seem to be too weary of 
putting the freshman in the spotlight early. There's three starters on the defensive side, and there's two big contributors, including Cam Moore on the offensive side of the football. Yeah, as I said, it's atypical, but if, if the talent is special. Greenfield gets the carry up the middle and bounces off of one would-be tackler and almost skirts around the edge. The tackle finally converted by Jeff Gurley, an outside linebacker. Well, I'm, I'm really liking the drive that I'm seeing in both of these young running backs. Not getting brought down by the first guy, maybe getting brought by, down by the second guy, but in most cases, not so much. It's that first point of contact and able to continue forward. That's big. Kaminsky over the middle, finds a soft spot, and again, had the chain gang move down the field to the 17-yard line the Cardinals go. Boy, Kaminsky was good last year, but he is really, really, really refined, in my opinion, his route running. He's a lot more calm, and he's a lot more likely to settle down from what I've seen so far today in some green grass and let Rudder find him. Really maturing nicely as a receiver and only a sophomore, I believe, correct? Correct. Yeah. Dakota Cremines checks in. He's the man in motion on the far side. Handoff Mugalu. Sturba sets the edge. And a gain of four and a half on the play. We brought this up in the pregame, and it's going to be something very interesting to watch over the course of the season. The Cardinals traditionally don't have tall centers. Sturba's six foot four, but he also moves like somebody who's five foot ten. It is rare in any offensive scheme to pull your center. And we've seen it quite a bit so far this year, which speaks to now what Jeff Thorne will do and what Brad Spencer will do is they look at what talent they have and they will cater to that. So they must think pretty highly of this young man to have him be the brains of the operation and also have him skirting around and, and setting the edge like that. Carey goes for, well, not a not a whole lot for Magalu. Stopped by a wall of bears. And it'll bring up third and seven for this Cardinal offense that is operating in the red zone. Brock Rudder, another fantastic and efficient season a year ago. Wasn't relied on as heavily as his freshman campaign. Did still complete 63% of his passes. He'll need one here on third and seven. Waits, Waits has time. Throws to the end zone. Touchdown to Corey Hart of a Rudder. Able to create. Fantastic job blocking. Really nice pocket setup. Left tackle, Jake Fielder, doing an unbelievable job protecting Rudder's blind side and allowing him the time, allowing the receiver's time to get open for that play to develop. So now Juka on to tech on the extra point. He's hit from 49, so what's a 20-yard field goal? Bad snap, and Svick is taking off. And he's unable to get to the end zone, so the extra point is no good, an operational error, and Cardinals now lead 9 to nothing with 4.15 to go in the opening quarter. But how about this play from Rudder? Sits in the pocket, his first, his second read aren't there, so he bootlegs out and able to find Hardima. Yeah, one, two, scramble. Oh, there you are. Broken play. And how about Hardeman on the other end? Mm -hmm. Able to kind of read what his quarterback wants to do and find the open space. That's that's nothing but chemistry. Hardeman is senior. And you see him kind of hesitate, realizes that the play isn't there, and yeah. books it to the corner. Well, and I'll tell you what, too. He saw the Bears' right defensive end come around the edge and scooted out but he actually could have sat in that pocket for longer because that end got pancaked he got too too much out over his shoes and there's and here's the, the extra point i i believe if hardima had left or excuse me if Svickus had left half a second earlier he's scooting that in trying to figure out exactly what he wants to do that ball comes skipping back to you things get a little jumbled up so now Juca will get this game back underway. 4.15 to go in the opening quarter. Ball caught at the one. Failinger is bottled up at the four, uh, this is 23 yard line. So let's see what this Bears offense comes out with. They've had 
some success moving the ball, but then Davidson got picked off by Beasley. So they have to try and protect the football a little bit better, but also try and advance it down the field. Yeah, if they clean that up, they might have a little bit going offensively, although even still, North Central defense been relatively stingy. They haven't allowed much on the ground. Passes that they've made, I feel like, have been kind of squeezed in there. Not really any kind of wide open looks. No, nothing is easy. So far today, 23 yards of total offense for the Spears unit. We're nearing the end of the first quarter. Davidson pup pressure in the backfield and has to bury it into the turf. Had pressure off the edge and in pursuit on that play was the Cardinals' Dan Gilroy, a freshman defensive end. Out of Lamont High School, yeah, and really, okay, again, we talked about the, the, the discipline that we're seeing out of the freshman here. Now, you get a freshman defensive end, maybe with his, one of his first hurries ever at the collegiate level. He doesn't get excited, he doesn't run past him, he breaks down, he squares him up. He made sure that he was going to get a hold of the quarterback rather than miss him there. Handoff and goes for no yardage at all. Working thing in there along with Lane Brinkman. Well, I don't know who made the initial stop there, but whoever squared him up stopped him stone cold where he stood. Let's see on the replay here. I believe that was Brinkman, number 92 in the middle. I think so. I, I, what an unbelievable tackle. He returns after a year away from this Cardinal football program and trying to do big time things. They need him in the middle. We mentioned off the top the lack of uh, veteran depth. Leonard with the pressure and on the tackle on the far side, Matt Sutherland steps up from the safety position and wraps up the ball carrier. Brings up fourth and 10 for this Bears offense that continues to stall on the Cardinals half of the field. Hi, Mom. My mom's walking by the booth. And here comes Papa Sabo as well. That's right. Fans out in full force for this opening weekend. Not just the Sabo family. Oh yeah, we've got a, a great crowd here. Big turnout. Punt to low line drive. Kaminsky hauls it in and he's got a lot of room to work with. Makes a few men miss, slips a tackle. He's got the edge. Can Davidson stop him? And he does. The quarterback slash punter Davidson comes up with a tackle and pretty much saves a touchdown that would have happened should Kaminsky have gotten past him. 2.34 to go on the day the Cardinals open up the home slate here inside Benedetti Worldly Stadium. This offense going back to work, Rudder trotting back out there. Damugalu hasn't made a ton of impactful plays in this game so far. He's gained only 16 yards on the ground, but maybe some new wiggle room will open up shortly for the sophomore back. Third of the outside is to Tyler Egan, the backup tight end, and he's wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Now that's a hard play with no blocker out there. You must make that first man miss in order to pick up any yardage whatsoever. Unable to do so there. Both tight ends come off the field. The Cardinals will go with a four receiver set. The other option on that one is to kind of sell that run a little bit better and hopefully get that corner to bite in. Although if it's a disciplined corner, it's not gonna happen. Second and 11. Rudder has a man in the flat, that's Mugalu. Brings it in, lowers the shoulders and gets past the 30 yard line up to the 28. And it's gonna be a third and two on tap for this Cardinal offense. You know, that's the second time they've hit a guy in the flat. And I saw several times before they hit the first, and I can't remember who it was right now, I'm blanking on it. I believe it was Greenfield. I believe you're right. They have basically ignored, Washi has ignored the back out of the backfield the entire game. So they have that whenever they want until they start honoring it. Mugalu breaks through the middle, jailbreak. <laughs> Offensive line creates a hole and he flies through it and to the 20 yard line he goes. Yeah, that was really well executed up front. He got pretty far before he was touched. New set of downs. And from the 20 yard line, the Cardinals back to work in the red zone. Another handoff, this time to Magalu, and he is, I believe, just wrapped up. Uh, the in turf the monster got him, he tripped. Either that or his cleat got hung up on the hand of Michael Prescott, who was the defensive end in the backfield. But a gain of nothing on the play. 
Magalu has shed weight. He wanted to get faster, wanted to be able to handle three down duties in the absence of Austin Brunig. But now it's Terrence Hill in there for second and nine. And Rudder to the back of the end zone. Kaminsky shakes free. And it's a second touchdown toss for Brock Rudder. This time finding the sophomore Kaminsky. Boy, I, what I really like about Rudder on this play is that as he moved up in the pocket, his eye stayed downfield the whole time. And he was getting really close to the line of scrimmage, but was able to fire that ball off just in the nick of time. Jack Mills, the man in coverage for the Bears, and he was about six inches away from disrupting that pass. He was way underneath him, though. He was beat. Point after is good for Judka. Oh, no, it is not. It's wide left. If not for that scramble, I think he would have been able to hit Kaminsky just a little bit sooner. And even though the DB wasn't a factor, he would have been even less of a factor. 15 to zero. Cardinals leading the Bears. And with a half a minute to go in the first quarter, I don't know what's more impressive, the fact that Brock Rudder is doing things like this or the defense limiting this WashU offense to 20 yards of total yardage. Do we have to pick? I guess maybe not. <laughs> it can all be impressive. I think they're equally impressive. That's, I mean, dominating in all facets is, is a nice thing. And there's the man at the helm. Yeah, and, and we can tack on a, a, a nice 49-yard field goal when we break, talk about the special teams unit. All three phases are clicking. Mm -hmm. Thorne now operating in his fourth year in capacity of the head coach after taking over for his father, John Thorne. How many? Four. This is his fourth year. Holy cow. I know. Seems like just yesterday. Yeah. But he's already 29 and six. That's filthy. <laughs> <laughs> Those thorns, they, they know what they're about. They do. And they know how to build a heck of a staff. For the first time, John Thorne not handling special teams duties this season. He is through and through a spectator. Failinger captures the edge and finally gets bumped out of bounds at the 36 yard line. Do we know who is handling special teams this year? It's kind of a coach by committee, I believe. Okay. There's a lot of hands on deck. So I know that we had mentioned before that Liam Crotty, I'm sure is working with the kickers, which is excellent. There is no designated coach okay. for special teams. I believe it's mostly positional groups and they kind of piecemeal it out. Yeah. First and 10, a new drive for the Bears to work with. Thrown to the outside and a nice spin move to get away from traffic, but the Cardinals swarming to the ball. The reception hauled in by Nick Coyne. Ben Wong comes up and we haven't talked about this man right there. 33, Ben Wong steps in, tries to fill the role of Tommy Sora from a year ago. He's got big shoes to fill. He sure does. What kind of pedigree do we have for Wong here? Out of Bloomington from a little bit south. And that marks the end of the first quarter. Wong is six foot, 213 pound middle linebacker. Just a sophomore, was a big time contributor on the special teams unit last year. Multiple times, he was the conference special teams player of the week. So he steps up and it's really no surprise that he is gonna fill a starter's role. Working theme, mentioning on this past week of the Red Zone as you see today's game sponsors. Working theme mentioning that Wong likes to hit people. That's a good attribute for a middle linebacker. Uh, yeah, if you don't, you think you're in the, the wrong line of work. The difference is liking to hit people and being good at it. That's true. And, and, and it's, you, you talk about filling Tommy Sora's shoes, but linebackers at North Central, since long before I got here, have been unbelievable. Anthony Silvestri to Gary Kamick to Lenny Radke to Wanger to Michaels. Yep. I mean, come on. Slezak. Slezak, come on. The names go on and on. It's not even fair. Some great mics have come through, and we'll see if Ben Wong can continue that tradition. New quarter, just about ready to begin. Davidson working with the 
Second and nine, he'll turn around and hand off. And boy, that Cardinal defensive line is just manipulating the line of scrimmage. That's Isaiah Ziegler who was in there, number 68, a true freshman who now has to hustle off the field. But you mentioned this on the offensive end, but for a coaching staff to trust a freshman right away. Yeah. And as pivotal as a position is defensive nose tackle. You gotta be good. You gotta be a hoss, especially on a three-man front, which the Cardinals are currently running. A nice gain of five, but it comes on third and long. So not nice after all. That was a completion to John Fisher. Excuse me, that was Jeff Dedeker on the reception. So it brings up fourth and three. And another punt for this Bears uh, special teams unit. Uh, I mean, the Bears just totaled one quarter of their offensive production so far on that drive. It's been tough sledding. We'll, uh, we'll try and spin it positively. <laughs> Kaminsky back, he's sitting at his 25 yard line. Davidson gets it away, a high kick. Fair caught, lets it bounce, and takes a favorable bear bounce to the three yard line. Ooh, so what a punt. Here's a fun task for Brock Rotor in the offense to uh, try and tackle. Great punt from Davidson. Oh my gosh, it doesn't get much better than that. Great snap too. Got a great freeze frame up it there. There you go. <laughs> right on line. Rudder has been great. Uh, there's no way about it. 11 of 14, he's got 111 yards, two touchdowns, very efficient. That's kind of the name of the game for the junior quarterback. It doesn't make a lot of mistakes. The only time he misses a throw is Kind of on his own accord. He never seems sped up. Yeah. Hands off to Greenfield, and Greenfield met in the backfield. Fantastic tackle. It was Jake Kuhn, the linebacker, stepping up. I do like that he was able to still fall forward and not lose yardage on that, though. We got a size on him? Greenfield? Yeah, where is he here? Greenfield is five foot nine and a sturdy 203 pounds. 203, okay, so he's not that small. I'm just very far away up here in the booth. Rudder has to scramble, gets it out to Greenfield and makes one man miss and able to pick up three yards. Gain some additional cushion away from that goal line. Rudder dropped on the play, but able to get that off. That was a crucial play working out of his own end zone. Yeah, I saw that pressure coming from the backside. He felt it though and was able to skirt away from it to buy himself a little bit of time to get that off. Now they've got a little bit of breathing room to work with here. Third and we'll make it nine. So they mark him at the five yard line. Four receiver set. This looks like single coverage on that far side of the field. No safety coverage over the top. Said they go to the near side and complete and dropping immediately knowing he's past the sticks. Andrew Kaminsky always aware of where he is on the field. Yeah, very heads up play. He knew there were guys behind him too. He knew his back was to them so he protected himself, which is good as John Thorne often lamented. Receivers are made out of porcelain so he's preserving himself. Big time producer last season. Kaminsky went off for 741 yards and four touchdowns as a freshman. That's more on the reception and away he goes. Look at that speed. He got up to full speed within the first two yards after the grab. It's a 15 yard pickup. You know, I had a, a chance to talk to Rick Spencer directly before the game. Now that's the father of Tyke Spencer who holds the majority of the Cardinal records. And oh, by the way, he got all those records only playing here for two seasons. <laughs> Rick Spencer said that Cam Moore is the first receiver he's seen that is at least as explosive as Tyke, his son. Hill the carry, gain of two and a half on the play. That's saying something. But you're talking about your kid. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you also have some receivers in there like a, a Pete Sorensen yeah. or a Chad O'Kane mm -hmm. or even in the last few years, Ryan Cool. Explosive players, but a different kind of explosive. Those guys had the vertical ability. Cam Moore looks like he has it all. Yeah, well, that's what Rick was saying too. He's, Look at his legs, they're huge. <laughs> Always churning. He's got speed, he's got size. Mm hmm. Should be a lot of fun to watch. Mugalu checks in at running back, second and eight. And a timeout called by North Central. They'll mull it over. That is their first timeout taken here in the first half. It's good, they'll 
chat about some things, chew the fat a little bit, make sure they've got what they want dialed up. 15-0 lead. And here's an interesting tidbit provided by Washington. They're 5-9 and nine in their last 14 games coming out of a bye week. They've dropped their last four exiting a bye week. This team doesn't get off the bus when they don't have a game the previous week. That's an interesting tidbit. Why would that be? Sometimes, especially if you have an early season bye like we see in D3, you get those first game jitters out of the way and then you've got to repeat them. Sometimes too much practice is a bad thing. You see that in baseball too. If, if you have one team finish a playoff series really quick and the other one goes seven games, the team that finishes their series quickly and dominated, sometimes there's a little bit of rust there. So it's, it's very difficult. You know, you come out of camp, you get into that game week rhythm for week one, then you've got to get out of the game week with them for two weeks. Then you've got to get back into it. It's just, it's a little bit difficult to have a bye week there rather than in week six or seven when you can use it to rest some guys and heal some guys up because they're banged up. Larry Kindbaum, the head coach of the Bears in his 30th season. He holds the all-time record at Wash U with 177 career wins. 30 seasons, that's impressive. He's been coaching there longer than you've been alive, my friend. Yes, he has. And by a comfortable margin, too. Yeah. Carry about three yards for Don Magalu, brings up third and manageable. Dakota Cremines is remaining on the field as a wide receiver. There's some extensive playing time today after not appearing much last week. He is listed on the depth chart behind Andrew Kaminsky. We'll see if he factors into this offensive game plan. He's a very quick and agile five foot seven wide receiver, kind of in the mold of a Ryan Rezac, who for a number of years was a very great possession receiver in this Cardinal program. This time it's a handoff to Magallo and just lowers the pad shelf and falls forward for the first down. Well, you talk about explosivity. He got up in a big hurry to full speed there and put a hurting on that linebacker. It's always fun to see a, a running back searching for contact. You know well, what I mean? Walter Payton would always say, when they think they can tackle you, you punish them for having that thought. And that's kind of, I feel, how Mugalu operates. I like that. New set of downs from the 41-yard line. Man in motion is Kaminsky. Clean pocket and dropped. Dropped over the middle by Kaminsky, and it's now a second and 10 for the Cardinals. Yeah, a little bit behind him, but still should have been caught. Haven't noted it yet, but consistently that pocket is holding up for Brock Rudder. Oh he's got gosh. three or four seconds consistently. Yeah, especially you saw it on that touchdown also. he's you're, you're supposed to give your quarterback three seconds. That's according to the quarterback's coaches, the ball should be gone then. If they hold it for longer than that, any kind of sack is on them. But he's been able to hold it for four and even five seconds before he lets that thing go, which is a testament to what the Cardinals are able to do up front. Six yard gain on the run for Greenfield. Again, makes this an obtainable third down and four. That's the name of the game. If you're going to be in a third down situation, you want to be it short. And for the most part today, the Cardinals have uh, made sure that that is the situation. See if they've hand the ball off here. They've really been able to pick up this yardage on the ground almost at will every time they hand the ball off. To the air. First few reads, not there, and instead to the flat they go. And you mentioned this, they're not covering the backfield. Yeah. Greenfield came right out and picks up the first down. Yeah, that's that's the third time they've been able to do that. And there were two times before where they could have, but Rudder was just kind of try, trying to make something happen a little bit down the field and didn't quite notice the back coming out. Inside bear territory, the Cardinals go. Terrence Hill in the backfield. Gets the handoff and met immediately by a number of Bear defenders. And the prime one right there was Jeff Merrick, a defensive back who hails from Bennett Academy. Yeah, real nice job up front by the Bears to not allow the Cardinal offensive line to create running lanes. Interesting is the fact that the Bears are based in a 3-3-5 package. They 
on the majority of snaps will roll out five defensive backs. It's tougher to stop the run in that particular defensive scheme. Am I right or wrong? Yes, but if you look right now, they've got five guys walked up on the line. They had six and walked one back. So while they only have three guys with their hand on the ground, they're mugging the line of scrimmage with several, several individuals. That was Cam Moore on the proposed end around, but didn't get around anything. And Moore comes off the field in favor of Corey Hardema after the loss of two yards. And I will speak to Wash U's speed on defense and that the Cardinals are not really able to, to get the edge thus far. We'll see what happens as the game wears on as far as conditioning goes. Corey Blair checks in. He's on the slot. On the far side of the field, sandwiched between Hardema and Kaminsky, his rudder appears to wipe or at least go to a hot route. Backs away, throws across the formation. A completion is thickest, but a flag thrown in the backfield. Big gain of 20 plus yards, but this one will be coming back. Yeah, it's going to be a hold on 53 and Nathan Gray, and it's a good call. Gray knows that here comes the official. I believe he was the one that threw the flag. No reason to confer. Well, anyways. <laughs> You saw this live time? Yeah, oh yeah. Here Gotta it is. Watch. Yeah. yeah. He just tackled him. Dragged him down. Mm -hmm. Feet got caught up. You gotta you gotta let go of the jersey. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you you trip over your own feet, but you can't be holding on to the defender when you do it. Big penalty negates a gain of twenty. Backs the Cardinals up 10 yards, and now it's third and 21. Rudder with all look day to throw. Look at the time, my goodness gracious, look out. Launches it across the formation, oh. completes it, a dangerous throw. Oh. Completed to Hardema, and Hardema pumped up inside the 30. That is something that on film, I'm gonna guess oh. that, hey, Coach Jeff Thorne's gonna go, let's not do that again. <laughs> a nice job, never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. But All I, day. I, you know, I, I coached with a guy one time who said that the only person on earth who's ever allowed to do that is Joe Montana. He called it the Joe Montana rule, never throw late across the field. Boy, and by a matter of inches, too, that that ball was completed and not, and not picked, picked off. Yeah. And if that ball was picked, that's a pick six. Mm -hmm. There was nothing but green pastures on that side of the field. Five seconds on the play clock now. The Cardinals are going to have to hurry up. Rudder able to get that snap off. Screen outside Cremines, and he's able to gain a few on that play. Not much, but a few. And that's his first reception of 2018. Really nice blocking by, I believe it was 81 down here on the bottom. It'd be Matt Metz. So they are, they're rolling out a very diverse and deep crop of receivers, and there is Metz. Get him reps, get him reps. Yeah, nice blocking out there. Was it Cremines had, had to kind of get on his horse to get outside that block a little bit. A little more speed. Second and seven. And uh, I, I don't know if he rocked back or if there was contact. Colton Bachneck fell back on his rear end. I'm not sure if that was. Um, I, I couldn't see if it was contact or he just fell. That's All right. offsides. All right. Didn't look pretty, but that'll be five yards for the Colonel offense. Yeah. Let's see what happened here. Yeah, they no, came across no and <laughs> he, just, <laughs> he, just, he just flinched. That's one for the blooper reel. <laughs> Ooh. Brings up second and seven. Make that second and two. It was previously second and seven. Could you make that noise again? Ooh. <laughs> I mean, that's if that was me, I'd be oh. uh, too many men that? in the huddle, I believe. Yeah, legal substitution. Colonel said one too many. So they'll give the five yards right back. It's gonna take off your shoes to count to 11. <laughs> so some procedural errors on these two teams. We'll put the ball right back to where it was to start. Moore and Cremines on the far side. Sfikis on the near side. The tight end rose as the H back in Greenfield to the left hip. 
of Rudder. Second and seven. Over the middle, ooh, almost a dangerous toss into traffic off the hand of Moore. He was thrown just a little too far behind him. Another flag. This one originates the line of scrimmage. That's a holding penalty on Jake Fiedler. And again, we'll redo second down. It'll be second and 17. Maybe the refs just like second down. They must. One of the funniest moments last week was an extra point attempted by the Cardinals, and they had to attempt it, I believe, five times because there were two false starts and two offsides on one extra point. That's too many times. There's another false start. Holy smokes. They'll this back is, up I another this five. This is the sixth time that we're attempting second down here. And they get that on Ricky Sturba, who came out of his haunches just a little too early, the center. Second and 22, and a delayed draw. Greenfield, plenty of pastures to run through, and he slips a few tacklers. Can he slip through one more? He does, and wow, all the way down to the 22-yard line he goes. Picks up almost every yard to gain for the first. He's so slippery. 17-yard pickup. <laughs> You think you got a hand on him, but guess what? You don't. That's going to be fun to watch. He's elusive. Woo! One, two, three. There's four. Yeah. And almost gets through five. He, if, if, if he, if 21 wasn't there, or 27, I couldn't quite make it out. If he wasn't there. That's a. Greenfield awfully close to that first down marker, and they're going to say he's short by what I've. I'm guessing would amount to be a half a yard. Leaving the offense out, it looks like. Bring in Tyler Egan, the tight end. Moore rushing off the field. Give a good hard count here, see if you can get him to jump. They've been jumping a little bit. No hard count, just a handoff to Magalu, who falls forward and picks up. Enough yardage to move the chains. I mean, if you've got Don Magallo on your team in an offensive line like this, it's, I dare you to stop me. He's a premier goal line back, a short yardage back, who actually has also shown some explosive uh, abilities this season. But when it comes down to it, 12 touchdowns last year, he was that short goal to gain kind of back and yeah. great at well, it. You said he, he cut. How much do you, do you know how much he cut? Uh, about 15 pounds. 15, which is a lot for a running back. He got thinner, got Faster, completed outside. Spickus makes one man miss and then gets rocked out of bounds by the linebacker who steps up, Jeff Gurley. Yeah, you gotta be really careful when you're dancing back to the inside. Luckily he was able to get some steam up. Impressive maneuver to, to stay in bounds. A little bit of ballet there. Was it Walter Payton that used to do ballet? There was a running back for the Steelers, Richard Mendenhall. Yeah, this goes back even further than that. To that. Handoff, Mugalu, touchdown number four this season. Mugalu once again finds the painted area. And for the third time today, the Cardinals have themselves a TD. Told you, premier goal line back. Really good strength of will there. Tyler Egan was in blocking and his defender was able to slip off, but it didn't matter to Magalu, who just decided to drive through him anyway. Welcoming the contact. That is the name of his game. Mm -hmm. Cardinals have been able to knock through an extra point. And there it is. So it's 22 to zero. Four minutes to go here in the first half and the Cardinals well, they haven't hit cruise control just yet. They're still working for what they've gotten, but a very efficient and uh, productive day for this offensive unit. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I, I almost prefer that. You don't want it to be too easy. You want to have to work for it. If it's easy, it's, I won't say no fun, but less fun. It's less gratifying. Yeah, and on top of that too, when you get down the, the road here and you start seeing Carthage and Milliken and Wesleyan and Wheaton, you know, you want to have been tested prior to that. Yeah, it, uh, it hits early. 
with Wheaton coming to town in two weeks. Ooh. That is the second home game of the schedule, and uh, that's going to be a big one. Very, very, very excited for that. Really bad taste in the Cardinals' mouth after last year's loss to the Thunder in Wheaton in what was a two-day affair yeah, because of the lightning and the storm delays. And Boy, they want that game back. And well, it, was a, it was a tale of two halves. They had dominated was. on the Saturday, and then on the Sunday, not so much. Ended up having to cough up the bell. They look great this year. They've looked great in this first half against the Wash U Bears as Judka sends a liner. This one's going to roll off the sideline, and that's a penalty. I always say the easiest penalty the officials have to call. <laughs> Nobody's going to be upset about those ones. But here comes the Cardinal defense that has been stingy this afternoon, and it's been the defensive line. We've talked about the linebackers and working thing and Wong. We've talked about the defensive backs, but when it comes down to it, Haverlin, the converted tight end to DN, has been fantastic. Tommy Highland, the transfer, the freshman Isaiah Ziegler, and their holdover, Josh Leonard. That's the starting four, and they've been really, really good. Boy, Leonard is exciting. You start adding those other names to it. Yeah, he, it's, he's another one of those guys that feels like he's been around forever, and he's only a junior. Rocked out of bounds after hey, a pickup of eight. You know whose name we haven't said so far either is Ayan. Yeah, Taha Ayon. Ayon, thank you. And he is uh, pretty dynamic last year. Yeah, he switched his number. He's now number 11 this season, but haven't heard his name called so far today. One's caught before the sticks, reaching out and able to get the line to gain on the reception there was the wide receiver Matthew Goldberg. Really nice second effort there to make that first down happen. Beasley the man in coverage and on the tackle he owns an interception today. Davidson drops back pressure in his face from Brinkman. Eludes it steps up gets wrapped up and wrestled to the ground by DJ Workenthien. I love watching DJ make a tackle. It is that rugby style wrap up and yeah, roll. Yeah, when you when you roll like that, and, and it was um, Pete Carroll that's a big proponent of that. I know he teaches it to his Seahawks, especially in their secondary, and cool to see it executed here. Nah, no way, almost. Oh, he dropped it. Whew. I thought he had it. That was Beasley for a second time who undercuts a route and almost came up with his second pick. He's gonna be an exciting guy to watch this season in the secondary. The anticipation, and then you also have yeah, those I rock. Mean, he, he gets under it so fast. You don't think you you think that the receivers got him beat, and then all of a sudden he hits the Jets. Look out! Davidson slipping out of the pocket, and he gets hammered after crossing midfield. But for the first time today, the Bears are now in Cardinal territory. Yeah, but it's fourth down, and that was not what you needed on that play. And it looks like they will trot the punt unit out onto the field. Have to. Got fourth and three and a half. Yeah. I mean, it, it, what you can hope for at best here is that the Cardinals run out of time. Davidson, and this is kind of what makes stop them. this is what makes the team's unit a little tricky for this Bears team is the quarterback is the punter. So the, there's always the possibility for a fake. Sure. Fourth and four from the 48 inside Cardinal territory. And no trickery here. A liner to the near side. Bounces, bounces, and another Again. tremendous punt. Oh my gosh, this guy's fantastic. Second one that coffins the Cardinals inside the five. Boy, he, I mean, he's got that down. I guess when the offense isn't working, at least you can rely on your, your special teams to sure, try and get something sure, sure, done. Sure. Well, now the Cardinals have two minutes to drive the entire length of the field. They've burned one of their timeouts, so they've got two to work with. And they're going to have to work the sideline a little bit and try and use the clock to their advantage. It's a good simulation for Brock Rudder and company to go through. You know what it is? It's actually magnificent. Yeah, nice, nice to get some reps here, actually, when there's not a lot of pressure on. Greenfield will start 
the drive as the running backs. Fickus and Kaminsky on the near side. And a false start. Yeah, he flinched. That was the right guard, Nathan Gray. Gray, a Naperville North product. In his sophomore season, gets the starting nod for the first two games. And he's the first man down into his haunches. He's ready to atone. And a handoff, Greenfield bounces it to the outside and still trying to shake loose, gets it to the original line of scrimmage. Gain of two and a half on the play. I don't think he's been brought down on the initial effort yet today. I don't think so either. And that's great. I mean, a wonderful attribute to have as a running back. Second and 10. The clock continues to roll. Rudder making a check. A long check. It looks like they're going to wait. They might just be wasting the clock. They might be. He's going to throw the screen. Oh, that's dangerous down there. Greenfield stays on his feet and picks up the first down all the way to the 17 yard line. Makes something out of nothing. Yeah, I mean, it turned out to be a good call. Now do the Cardinals go up tempo? Maybe. It looks yeah, like it looks they will. Set. Here we go. Chain set, clock restarts after the first down. And a deep throw, caught and complete. 31 yard line, the clock will stop to allow the chains to settle. Corey Hardema on the reception, a gain of 12 on the play. Rudder again, deep throw, same spot, same result. First just, down, Hardema. Just keep rounding it, I guess. You pick up 15 yards of crack until you're in the end zone. It's like a deep button hook. Yeah, it's kind of curls a, towards the inside. It's a, it's a hitch, but it's a, a hitch at the sticks, basically. Another first and 10. They wanted it again. Uh, Rudder dancing around in the pocket and oh. almost intercepted. If Kaminsky didn't get a paw on that, yeah, that's it, a pick. That sailed on Rudder a little bit there. Man in the area was Justin DiCarlo, the defensive back. And like I said, if Kaminsky didn't get a fingertip, he has himself an interception. Look at this right here. That's a dangerous throw. He had a lot of pressure around him. Oof. All right, this is good. Get the old line time to settle down. 51 ticks left here in the first half. A second and 10 from the 44. Out of the backfield, Greenfield makes one man miss and runs out of bounds. Only hey. five seconds come off the clock. He wanted to pick up a couple more yards before he went out, but his momentum just carried him that way. But it looks like an adjustment from the Bears. They had somebody shadowing him in the flat. First time today we've seen that because for the most part, as you've mentioned, the running back's free coming out of the backfield. Third and seven now from the 48. Four receivers set. Rudder making checks. Instructing the freshman running back Greenfield on pass protection plays or maybe a route. Rudder, Rudder waiting, waiting, gets it to Greenfield. It slips out of his hands and out of bounds it goes, incomplete. And that's a rare mistake made by the freshman today who's been so good. Going to trot out the punt unit. Uh, it looks like he might have taken his eyes off of it just a little too soon. Mm -hmm. So Zane Ladico, the punter, is an interesting man. Last year he was basically the number three running back. And after Austin Burnick went down to begin the playoffs, he was the number two featured behind Don Mugalu. Hasn't had a carry so far this season, but probably the conference's best punter. Gets an end over end punt that's fair caught at the 17 yard line, 32 seconds remaining. Ladico doing his thing. Yeah, that was great. And, and he was fun to watch as a running back too. Very powerful runner. To get those uh, you know legs that he works and works and works to be such a good punter. Uh, turns out it's great to run on those also. Does have a history of knee issues towards ACL, so perhaps trying to take the load off of those joints, keeping them strictly as the conference's most lethal punter. And it, just like with Davidson as the punter for the Bears, you have a running back back there for the Cardinals. The threat of a, a fake is always present. Yeah, absolutely. Davidson lofts it deep, and 
well out of the range of his intended target. I know I've talked about this before, but when, when I played Carthage, had the most athletic punter I've ever seen, and they ran a rugby-style punt, and he had carte blanche to try and pick up the first down if he thought he could get it. The, carches, the coaches gave him carte blanche. didn't matter where he was on the field. If you think you can get it, get it, and that's how athletic this kid was, and it was dangerous. It was hard to cover. Second and 10, Davidson operating in the pocket now, bootlegs out, throws across his body, and connects with Watts on the far sideline, quickly smothered by Beasley in a first down converted by the Bears. The clock stops with 19 seconds remaining. It's probably the longest play, if I'm not mistaken, for the Bears today, it is. Long drop, Davidson steps up and scrambles, and he's gonna have to get down and he didn't get to the stick, so the clock will continue, and it's going to be stopped at about nine and a half seconds with a timeout taken by Washington University. I guess it's not a bad idea to go for it. You really have nothing to lose no, here no, if you're no. the Bears. It's, oh. Well, they're going to have to reset the clock. They just ran some time off of it by accident, I do believe. They did. Okay. So they have to reset that. But, I mean, for the, the Bears... You have everything to gain and nothing to lose. Sure, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you've got the ball. The, the having the ball is an opportunity to score. You use that to score. I, I mean, that's what I would do. Especially if you've got even the tiniest bit of offensive momentum going right now, which so far on the day, comparatively, they do. I would run one play and try and pick up half of it. Take and, a timeout. And yeah. And then, then go for the end zone. Yeah, yeah, and then go you take your broke. stab. Now they'll put an even 10 seconds up on the clock. Very warm day, sunny, does not feel like fall. I'm okay with that. The only reason that it somewhat resembles fall is the fact that we have football in front of us, but mm -hmm. it feels like a mid-July oh, day. I've played some brutally hot football games. So those early season games can be, uh, can be scorchers. Davidson deep and tipped up. Matt Sutherland in coverage and played that to perfection. Yeah, that was really great. Cardinal defensive backs have been hawks yeah, today. Sutherland only 5'8". Was able to jump and get in front of that, showing off some of those springs. He uh, doubles as the Cardinal baseball team starting shortstop. No kidding. A lot, of, kid. a lot of lateral quickness, and sure. that serves him well in the secondary as that safety. Baseball team dominant, too. They are. Handoff on the inside, and this will end the half. Clock expires. First half has come to a close. And North Central thoroughly dominating the first 30 minutes of the contest. They'll head to the locker room, leading 22 to nothing over the Wash U Bears, who have been able to get nothing done offensively. Coming up. For your halftime entertainment, we'll have segments from this past week, the first episode of the Red Zone. We'll have our conversation with Jeff Thorne. We'll have this week Cardinal Corner and a sit down and the quick hits with the two players joining the set. That was Brock Rudder and DJ working in a couple of Nequa guys and a couple of really funny dudes as well. So enjoy that. We'll be back for the second half of action here on NCTV 17. <laughs> This Red Zone segment is brought to you by Arena Americas, specialists in providing full-service rental solutions for events and special occasions of all sizes. First edition of Check the Tape coming up right now, and we'll get three plays from this Lake Forest game. And this first one seemed to get you glowing was your offensive line, not just getting to their assignments, but doing a little extra as well. Yeah. Uh, Ricky Sturba doing a fantastic job of getting into the second level. Yeah, Ricky's extremely athletic, 6'4", 285 pounds, and can run really, really well. So a couple schemes we've added to the offense this year, getting, you know, taking advantage of the athleticism of our offensive line. Ricky, and you see Colton Bachneck, the backside tackle, uh, way downfield, finding work. That's exciting, you know, as, a, as an offensive mind and uh, head coach, when your offensive linemen are getting down the field to find blocks, that's a really positive sign. What does that mean for your running backs, to have a more complex blocking scheme? Does that 
give them more responsibilities to try and find crevices and holes to get to? Yeah, you know, it just it dresses up our offense a little bit more too, you know, by, based on where we put the running back and how we move him. Uh, it's more for a defense to have to prepare for. Mm -hmm. You know, lining up one way doesn't tell them, okay, here we go, here's inside zone, yeah. here's outside zone. There's a little bit more uh, to the menu that, that we're bringing to the table now. More studying for other defensive right. coordinators right. to get ready for. Yep. Um, second play I want to get to, and this is a, a defensive play, and we see DJ speed off the edge, but how about the interior defensive line collapsing the offensive line for Lake mm -hmm. Forest and uh, kind of allowing for the edge rush? Yeah, Josh Leanhart uh, takes an inside move there and absorbs the tackle, and our defensive tackles do a great job here of, of commanding double teams mm -hmm. um, with their presence. And, and when you can do that, you typically are able to free up a linebacker, oftentimes even a defensive end. And uh, right now, at least game one, we got off to a really good start in our tackles doing that. You mentioned the second level. And actually, you mentioned the freshman outside linebacker in the first segment as well, Alex yep. Wolf. And this is a play that we've talked about defensive secondary and cornerbacks technique. This is a linebacker looking like a cornerback. Yeah, that's, that's a really athletic play. And that's Alex gifted that way. He's an excellent athlete. He's got length. He's got speed. Um, and, and you see it on display there. That's great coverage and a great play on the ball, too, using the correct hand mm -hmm. to bat the ball away and, and avoiding interfering with the receiver at the same time. Now let's shift the uh, focus to Wash U, who mm -hmm. comes in to Benedetti Worldly Stadium. You guys traveled to them last year. It's their turn to take the five-hour trip up. Right. Um, but this is a decent team, and last year you, you struggled in the first quarter against them. What are you expecting here in 2018 from this uh, Bears unit? They're more than a decent team. I think they're a very good football team. They're, they're disciplined. They don't make mistakes. They're... You know, Wash U's academic requirements are, are very high. Mm -hmm. So you're dealing with really intelligent kids. As a result of that, you're not going to see very many mental errors. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, they're very, very good athletes, too. Uh, their quarterback and their punter is a Barrington High School kid who we really recruited hard mm -hmm. out of high school. Um, so I know that athletically, they're going to test us. Yeah. Uh, they do a, a really good job on both the offensive and defensive lines and, you know, playing with pad level and using their hands the right way. So our work is, is definitely cut out for us. We're going to have to be at the top of our game. Yeah. This is the first week of conference play. It's week two for you guys. Is that, is that kind of an interesting, or are you not even thinking about that? Same issue last year. Um, I think maybe it was week three because our bye was in between our first two games, I believe. Uh, but with this new 10-team conference, mm -hmm. this is going to be the norm going forward. I prefer it. I think it's a great thing that we have 10 teams in the conference, adding a school like uh, wash you to the conference is, is a great thing for our football conference. Mm -hmm. uh, quick hit time. You get one of the quick hits as well. I didn't prep you for this. Okay. Are you ready? All right, yeah. Um, if uh, you're a grill master, what is your ultimate burger? My ultimate burger uh, would be a burger with a little bit of uh, feta or blue cheese Ooh. built inside of it. Yeah. Um, and that's probably about it. I'm not, I'm not a real fancy guy. If you can put... If you can put a, a hard, or not a hard boy, but a, a fried egg on yeah. top of it, now it just goes to another level. Sounds delicious. Yeah. Thorn special. That would be it. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. No Good problem. luck against Wash U. Thanks. Coming up next, we have a couple of players joining me on set. We'll be right back for the Red Zone. This Red Zone segment is sponsored by Belgio's Catering. It's a lot of logistics. Uh, we, we function with Google Calendar to make sure all of our staff know exactly who, who's practicing and when between men and the women. And so it goes for a coach with double duties of steering a men's and women's program. Kyle Lexline is at the helm of both North Central Volleyball teams and is one of four coaches currently managing a pair of rosters. To begin, it was kind of trial and error. Try some things, see if it worked. But the awesome thing is we can expedite our process within the seasons. So if something didn't work in the women's season, we can try it in the men's season. The benefit of coaching a men's and women's team, that's synergy. Tennis coach Ryan Jump experienced that last year when he assumed responsibilities for both teams and inherited a veteran men's roster and a very green women's roster. All those juniors and seniors that we had last year were definitely helpful. To, you know, getting the women on campus, getting them acclimated, helping make friends, all that stuff. So men and the women have done a phenomenal job of buying in. They're great brothers and sisters off the court. Um, so they trust the system, they trust the process. But while having one philosophy for two teams is a positive, the drawback is scheduling. Recruiting is a year-round job. And for these coaches, so are the competitions. One thing that I was, you know, talking you know, coming into this industry was that you're 
my job is 10% tennis. Everything else is, you know, all over the board. Steve Sellers and Mark Schmidt are the other two coaches responsible for two programs, the golf and swimming respectively. And soon, a fifth will join the ranks. Wrestling coach Joe Norton with the addition of women's wrestling. Jump in X-Line's advice? I mean, it works itself out, but finding that balance and having, you know, flexible kids on the team that, you know, can really buy into what we're trying to do, that's, that's huge. Make sure you got the right coaching staff because you're not going to be able to be at everything. And, you know, a lot of the recruits and a lot of the players want to talk to the head coach. They want to speak with them. But you have to make sure that you can delegate out and make sure that the recruits and your current student athletes know that you trust this person just as much as yourself. This has been the Cardinal Corner. I'm Kevin Jackman. You guys ready for the quick hits? Oh, yeah. Sure. You guys get to be uh, grill masters for this first question. So you're on the grill. You're at a barbecue. You get to set the menu. Describe your ultimate burger. We'll start with Deej. Um, for me, I'm a big fried egg. Nice. So, you and Coach can combine on that one. Yeah, so if you get some fried egg and cheddar cheese and some bacon on there, and that will keep me going. Keep it plain, though. Nice. None of that lettuce or any of that. So. <laughs> no green. No green allowed. No green. <laughs> Brock. I'm not eating whatever he's making. I've seen him grill too many times. Oh, get out of here, dude. <laughs> I'm probably going with burger with uh, some cheese and bacon inside mm -hmm. of it. Oh, lathered a stuffed burger. Up. Oh, yeah. Lathered up with bacon on top, some barbecue sauce. Nice. I'll, I'll, I'll have some lettuce on there. I'll eat healthy for a little bit. <laughs> Gross. Hey, <you> good. Gross. <laughs> Um, all right, so some people hate leg, day, leg days, some people hate running. What is your least favorite workout? We'll start with Brock for this one. Ooh, uh, it's got to be some days during the off season when uh, we're out there. Coach Janicek will be doing squat or something. He'll come up to me. We got like four sets, and he'll say, how many sets you done? I'll be like, three. He goes, all right, well, you got three more. And I'm like, that adds up to about seven. <laughs> He's like, nope, three more. <laughs> how about you? Um, well, unlike Brock, I actually work out sometimes, but uh, <laughs> the one exercise that really gets me, you ask anyone on the team, I just, the split squats. Coach Janice has been running these split squats. We've been doing them forever, but uh, it's one of those ones where you really got to get your mind ready for it because yeah. it just takes a toll on your body. What exactly is a split squat? So it's just one foot's on the ground, one foot's on the bench, elevated yeah. off the ground, and you just got a barbell, and you're just pretty much doing a squat on one leg. Whew. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty... <laughs> It's very challenging. I can't do squats on two legs. I can't imagine one. <laughs> Holy smokes. Um, third question, the last one. We'll get you out of here on this. Uh, DJ, we'll start with you. If you could be a star player on a professional team, what position and what team? Uh, well, I'm a huge Bears fan growing up and playing a linebacker. I think being you know, a middle linebacker on the Bears has always been a dream for a lot of little kids You know, with the leagues of Dick Buckus or Brian Ocker. Yeah. So uh, that'd probably be my answer. Brock? Uh, that's pretty easy for me. Uh, I would have to go to Lambeau Field and be quarterback for the Packers. I'm a huge Packers whoa, fan. Whoa. I like to say I'm an owner. I got a couple shares back <laughs> in the day. And anything to do with the Packers, I'm all in for it. I know you guys are really good friends, but I, I sense a little bit of division on this particular subject here. Packers, yeah. Bears, he's, uh, I don't he's, scared. he's scared to watch the game with the roommates. Yeah. I don't know if he should be the one that's scared considering his quarterback just completely... Yeah. I just tell him we're 17 and four in the last Rogers started game. So, well, how much can you do? Man? It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for hopping on. We appreciate it. Hopefully, we get a Bears win come the uh, second meeting against the Packers. <laughs> yeah, of course. But uh, hopefully, a win too this week against WashU. Thanks for stopping by. Thank of course. You. Coming up next, we have Sports Information Director Clark Tucher hopping on. We'll be right back on the Red Zone. Welcome back for the second half of play. Kevin Jackman, Grant Sabo. Grant, that first half was fantastic. And, hey, this broadcast is going pretty well, too. But, hey, let's talk about <laughs> Brock Rutter. Um, this guy, 22 of 28, he's got a, a lot of impressive throws on his resume so far today, two touchdowns. And that's what, we, what we've come to expect from Mr. Rutter. 22 of 28. 22 of 28. There's an old adage uh, that a lot of coaches who like to run the ball use, and that is, when you throw the ball, three things can happen. Two of them are bad. <laughs> if you can complete 22 out of every 28 passes you throw, you don't got to worry about those two bad things happening. <laughs> uh, that's, that's just impressive. Well, the receiver is also helping him out. Corey Hardeman having a big day. He has four grabs for 78 yards and also a touchdown. Uh, Andrew Kaminsky also with the other score. These guys are not just 
running crisp routes, they're creating space, and they're giving him alleys to throw through. Yeah, absolutely. And once they get the ball in their hands, they're able to do a little bit more with it. They're not getting taken down right away either. There's a lot of, lot of players getting yards after contact, which is really exciting to watch. It gets me uh, jumping up and down here in the booth, and I'm, I'm not even joking a little bit. <laughs> Let's, before we cut to the field, talk about the defense and how these guys are getting the job done too. The linebackers have been great. The defensive backs have really put on a show, and that includes, and certainly, especially, Jake Beasley, the wide receiver who turned cornerback this training camp, has a pick and almost another. Should have had two. He's been two. great. Should have had two. They've been covering up the secondary and keeping this Bears offense from marching down the field. They've only had one possession wind up inside Cardinal territory, and they were forced to punt from the 48 on that one. We are underway. Derek Judka kicking this one off. It's hauled in at the eight-yard line, and away we go. Good coverage on the team's unit for North Central, and the second half has begun. All right. I, I mean, I don't even know where to begin with adjustments. North Central, I, I can't speak to any because they don't uh, really have to make any. I mean, right. They're, they're kind of dominating. Wash U, I... I, it's not a scheme issue. It's more of a, a Jimmy's and Joe's rather than an X's and O's kind of thing. Well, Davidson so far today has been, I guess you could say efficient, 9 of 15, but he does have a pick and only 41 yards through the air. Really? 9 of 15, huh? 9 of 15. It's tough to get an offense going when you're averaging four yards per completion. Well, what you can say about Davidson is that he's been a great punter. That's true. Completion, and that goes for exactly four yards. There we go. So a very short completion, but as you mentioned, uh, great punting from Davidson. He has pinned the Cardinals inside the five-yard line twice and has averaged 43 yards of punt. It's uh, what he's doing with his arm that's a bit of a trouble for this Bears team. Throw to the outside, and that's complete. That'll go for a first down. They'll move the chains, and this offensive drive starting in exciting fashion for Wash U. You know, it... it Schematically, what you can do if you're Wash U is whatever you weren't doing in the first half, I suppose. You know, try and get the ball out of his hands fast since he's able to do that. You know, get his guys the ball in space here. Oh, there, there we go. That is a reception by Singer, and Singer's going to take it to the house. From 66 yards out, a beautifully placed ball over the shoulder of Singer by Davidson, and a touchdown, the first of the day for the Bears. Boy, and what the Cardinals cannot do is come out of this locker room thinking that the game is over. There have been many, many, many games at North Central I've seen where there have been, there's been complete domination by one team in the first half, and then the other team comes out in the second half and just snatches it right back and, and gets the win. I know I was regaling you with several of those mm -hmm. before the game started in the distant past, but even more recently, like last year at Wheaton. So North Central's got to come out firing here. First one is up and good. The PAT is knocked through, and it's a 22 to 7 score. Let's take a look at that replay because what a ball thrown by Davidson. Yeah, an excellent route. He just burned him. That was Braden Lindmark, the, the true freshman out of Naperville Central, that gave up that long touchdown pass. Growing Pains will be uh, the name of the game. And apparently, our cameraman being asked to back up. That's our sports director, Justin Cornwell. And the official coming by and uh, we'll see about that one. For Just, now, Justin's Justin, standing his ground. Justin's always getting into trouble. He's just a troublemaking kind of kid. That's not even close to true. <laughs> <laughs> so only 49 seconds off the clock, and we already have a score for Wash U. I believe that one play totaled their entire offensive production in the game thus far. Yeah, yeah, they really did. In the first half, they had 64 yards. So on that one play, yeah, they matched their output. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was saying. Caught at the three, and here comes Cremines to the near side, and he's wrapped up at the 19. I think he so, was a little gassed by the time he got into contact there and didn't have enough to quite explode through it. Running across the field like that, you're, you're moving your legs a lot, but not gaining much yardage north-south. They must have had the wall try to set up on that side. 
So let's see what the Cardinals have as a response. Their first bit of adversity here this afternoon. Brock Rudder trots out onto the field with his offensive unit and the running back Greenfield to the left of him. Rudder over the middle complete to Kaminsky and a solid pickup of 18 yards. And Kaminsky's so good at finding those little crevices. That's the hugest difference I'm noticing so far this year. Because he was starting to get good at that last year, but this year he has, he has been transcendent this afternoon. Really finding that green grass and just kind of settling down. He's a very, very calm receiver this year until he gets the ball in his hands and then he explodes. Speaking of explosive, oh. how about Greenfield? And the ball explodes out of his possession. It's still loose at midfield, a battle for it. They're gonna have to unpile this to see who's got it, but I believe Wash U, I saw cover it up. The ball was slick, it was bouncing yeah. around, and Wash U has recovered, so a touchdown on the first offensive drive and a turnover here on the second. Yeah, after moving the ball though, so it's not entirely discouraging, but still also not ideal. The defense is gonna have to answer here and not let Wash U score and hang around in this game. It was one of those things, they just got a hold of his arm and on a hot day like this, when you're sweaty, sometimes that ball pops out of there like a lupini bean. <laughs> so Wash U will try and capitalize and make this, they can make this a one score game if they can net themselves a touchdown. Cardinals have missed two extra points. So first and 10 from the 48 and a throw to the near side, well blocked. Well, so what we've seen thus far from Wash U is that they're trying to work the edges. They're working the flats. They're gonna set up flat route, flat route, flat route, flat route, and then take a shot once they catch the, the defenders sleeping. Davidson on second and four, hands off, and able to capture the edge and pick up the first down, but a penalty marker coming in. I'm not sure what that's gonna be. It was Emmanuel Ingerman on the carry. Hold is the initial indication. So back up. So I wasn't able to catch the number on it because of the, the wind over the ref's mic. But somebody in a white jersey. There you go. I think that's a safe guesstimate. Brings up second and 14 instead of a first down. I like that. Sweltering day here inside Benedetti World East Stadium. The heat certainly going to be a factor in the second half. Yeah, conditioning really comes into play and hydration in, in games like this. Bears will spread out the Cardinals. Five wide across the board. Pressure comes from Haverland and the pass sink complete to the far side of the field. Or the way that popped up, if it had just a little bit more air under it, there were a couple of Cardinals in the area that had a shot at picking that. The intended target was Jeff Dedeker. And he almost handed the Cardinals uh, a turnover. Nice little gift. Nobody in the vicinity, though. Davidson, good time. Rumbles right, Haverlin there. And almost forces the football out of his possession, but drags him down from behind, and that's where the Wash U offensive drive will stall. Sure, and that was a coverage sack, too, because he had a lot of time to throw, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, before he's flushed out of the pocket, and then 20's able to run him down. That's the converted tight end, Brighton Haverland. Six foot five and only 217 pounds. He's got some length on him. I like that name, too. Haverland. Brighton Haverland. It might be a name we start calling more and more as he gets used to the positional change to defensive end. I hope so. Davidson to punt. And a rugby style kick that'll bounce and poison called and ooh, that was close for comfort and wow. This will be the third time the Cardinals will start a drive. What, what? This time at the one and a half yard line. This guy needs to be the CCIW special teams player of the week I'm thinking. That's the starting quarterback as the special teams player of the week. Isn't that something? Yeah, well, that's a talented kid. So the Cardinals will have to start this possession at the one yard line. There's Justin Cornwell. He's right where we left him. Yeah. 
told the ref to go pound sand. <laughs> See, here we go. First and 10 from the one. Rudder will throw. Out route, complete. Big time throw. Big time catch. Kaminsky yeah, you know, is seventh that, grab. That, that corner route is, if, if run and thrown properly, is, is a nice, easy one to get open on. And they really showcase that there. It's almost unguardable if it's properly run. If it's done right. Play action outside Moore. Aye. And he gets wrapped up. He tried to make one extra move instead of getting upfield. Well, so 11. That's Kaminsky. Help me out. Yeah, Kaminsky had a nice block. He had him sealed. Um, but he had him sealed to the inside. So when you try and bounce that out, he read, he read his block, but there was a guy out there. Kaminsky yeah. actually needed to seal him to the outside and not to the inside. The alley there was in the middle rather than outside. Only a two-yard pickup. Second and eight from the 21. Deep drop for Rudder. Look out. Pressure around the feet. Steps up, throws it incomplete. Intercepted. Yes. In and out of the hands of Rose and picked off. Uh, we've seen a lot of tip balls today, and that's going to happen. You can't keep tempting fate and tipping the ball like that. That was a advantageous play. Rudder, I mean, he sets his feet. He delivers a good throw. Yeah, and and Fiedler was was beat to the outside and was able to stay on his man just enough to allow Rudder to step up and deliver that ball. Justin DiCarlo, the man intercepting that pass, and he was close earlier today on an interception. Comes through here, and that's the second turnover of the second half for the North Central offense. That's no good. They're going to have to get that ironed out. Now Davidson takes over again. Goes to the outside, and a completed pass goes for four. And they're keeping working those flats, so that's, that's going to be the strategy. Try and work the periphery, pick up gains of three or four yards in attempt. Working thing on the tackle. He's been active. Six tackles so far today. Beasley leads the team with seven, but another pass and another first down. Singer on the reception. And the big time receiver who burned the Cardinals for a touchdown last season comes up again with another big grab. It'll be interesting to see what the Cardinals do to adjust here. Because it's right now the, the WashU offense is moving the ball, but they're kind of a one trick pony. They're not running the football. They're, they're throwing the flats. And an open field tackle made by Lindmark on the near side. Able to drag down Nick Sion. What is the adjustment well, if a team is consistently thrown in the flat? You, you want to run cover two, which is exactly what they're doing right now. That leaves the corners and the flats to kind of uh, cover those. And then you've got linebackers to come out and help when, uh, when the ball gets released out there. The Cardinals have switched to a cover two. That, that would be my adjustment also. Um, but the issue is that they are throwing a lot of those screens and they're getting a man on that corner and blocking him. So the corner needs to shed the block in order to make the play. If the corner cannot shed the block, then you've got safety coming up to make the play and you've got linebacker coming up to make the play. But you can pick up a significant chunk of yardage before either of those two guys get there. On third and one, they go to the ground game and pick up the necessary yardage. Yeah, so I mean, they haven't really been much of a threat on the ground, so what you could do is, is take your outside linebackers and cheat them out a little bit in order to help out there, or take your safeties and cheat them out. But then you're kind of leaving the middle of the field wide open, so. First and goal, Davidson hands off, and a big nasty collision at the six yard line. Yeah, they're thinking that they're gonna split out, we'll spread out the linebackers to cover the flats, and, and they're, they're gonna try and pound it up the middle, but they're really just not picking up much yardage because of the stoutness of the Cardinal defensive front. Logan Bash, the running back. Play action, throw across, it is intercepted by Beasley. Here he comes on the return, and up to the 15 yard line, the penalty marker flies in there. Two penalty markers. But Beasley able to come away with the football in a dangerous Three penalty throw. markers. I, something must have happened. 
Watch for an unsportsman like here, maybe. Looks like maybe a collision to the head of Beasley, and he's holding his right arm a little gingerly on his way back. But his second pick of the day, and here comes the call. So it's a personal foul on the... F and a dead ball foul, too. Yeah, on the Bears. and. So what happened here? Let's see, it goes through their hands and Beasley just, just able to take it away. Greenberg was the man in coverage. Joink. <laughs> oh, oh late he hit. came in late. Yeah. There's no reason for that. Mm -mm. Well, the Cardinals give it and they take it away. And Rudder over the middle. Oh, oh almost cow. intercepted again. Listen, calm down. Jake Kuhn almost plucked that ball away. Yeah, you know what, they, they keep trying to throw that uh, that little comeback there, and it's not working so hot. The Bears are wise to it. Pound the ball. Maybe time to start running the football. Yeah. That is the case with Magala, who only able to pick up maybe a yard. All right. Some stagnation yeah. here in the second half, the Cardinal yeah. offense. Yeah, Bears are looking good. Twenty-two to seven, North Central with the lead in the third quarter. Cardinals leaded, make that lead. Twenty-two nothing <laughs> at the break. Up words. There you go. Rudders got pressure and he felt it, threw it, completed to Hardema. Boy, his pocket presence, man. He just steps right up. He's cool as a cucumber. Delivers the ball, not worried about it. He had pressure coming from both sides as he stepped up and threw. Bullet. Right on target to Hardeman. From the 47, a new set of downs. Thrown to the outside and too tall for his intended target, Michael Sfikis. Just, uh, He's just a little excited. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. A little, um, maybe happy feet in the pocket. It's one of the, the balls are sailing on him, and usually when you see that out of a quarterback, it's that they're just a little bit too fired up. You got to kind of... Kusfarba and <laughs> <laughs> second and ten now, and the running back is Hill, the freshman, a true running back by committee today. It's fun to watch. Five seconds on the play clock. Cardinals get set, and the snap is underway. Hill gets the carry, and on second and ten, he picks up seven. Nice chunk of yardage for the offense to gain, and third and manageable coming up. Manageable is the word. Rudder now 26 of 35. Let's we'll see what he does here on third and four. Back to pass. Double move and incomplete misfire to Sfikis on the sideline. And yeah, he was right in between the, the brackets on that coverage. So he had the corner underneath and he had the safety over the top. He makes the move and he's right in between them there. The safety hadn't quite gotten over there in time. And uh, he's off to the races if, if they're able to connect on that. Brock Rudder wanted to stay on the field and go for that fourth and four. But Jeff Dorn, the head coach, has other thoughts? Yeah, this is a this is a wise choice. The Bears have moved the ball well. I, I would maybe go for it here if you know the, the second half looked like it did in the first, but I think the punt is the right call here. High towering punt inside the 10, and it's actually taken at the 11. Fair cut by Nick Sion, and well, they flipped the field position. That's the benefit of punting there after being backed up inside their own five on three occasions so far today. But this second half is not going according to plan for the Cardinals. And this is, I think it's a good test because obviously that first half was, wasn't easy, but it just seemed like the Cardinals were having their way. The second half is not, not like that. Yeah, and that's fine. You're gonna deal with adversity, especially when you have a team like the Bears that are well coached, that are disciplined, you know, that have a win under their belts, that you know, it's, it's, it's a solid team. They also had two weeks to prepare. Mm -hmm. And although we mentioned in the first half that they're five and nine in their last 14 games coming out of a bye week, sometimes if you adequately 
have enough film on a team and you can learn their tendencies. And these two teams matched up last year. Well, you might have the upper hand. Carey goes for three yards. I think what's most impressive are the halftime adjustments that the Bears have made and kind of put the Cardinals on their heels a little bit. Sure, well, they, they've come up with an offensive scheme that's working. And, and so far, the, they've been able to execute it well. But they're not going to be able to sit there and do that all half, I don't think. Davidson flushed, throws across the body and incomplete. Good coverage on the back end and good pressure by the front four. And we're starting to see a little bit of that right now as well. You know, towards the end of the last drive and then now at the beginning of this drive, they're not attacking the flats like they were in the first two drives. Watch out for the big man, Tommy Highland, right in the middle of the defensive line. And instead, it's thrown to the outside. And it's going to be close to the sticks. It's going to be a fourth down. That was Singer again. Not quite able to pick it up. Brian Bochamp on the tackle, keeping this from being a first down. Look at the jailbreak there. I mean, if number eight, uh, Nick Sione, had stuck on his block just a little bit longer, I think they're moving the sticks there. Instead, they're going to punt. I mean, they're backed up in their own you territory. Have to, you have to here. Move, but you have to. It's painful when you come up a half a yard short. It is. This is prudent, and there's a lot of game left to play, and they're doing all right comparatively. Mitchell and Kaminsky back to field the punt. Oh, Davidson going to take out. off. Picked and it up. he gets there. Yeah, I He like was that. watching. He was watching. He yeah. was watching. He took off. Uh-huh. And you mentioned that earlier today, my friend. You said watch, watch, because they've got their athlete back there as a punter. Really heads up play here. 33 turned his back before the punt happened. That's a big time play and that keeps the drive alive. Sure. Could and be a big momentum shifter unless the Cardinals do something about it here. So a new set of downs for the Bears to work with. Run, bounced outside, and a really tough sledding on the ground. Yeah, getting punished for it was John Fisher, the running back. Even when it looks like he has an alley, Cardinals quickly cover that up. Yes, they do. It was Zach Greenberg stepping up from the safety position for the tackle. Another handoff and another carry, and boy, the Cardinals are swarming to the football right now. Looks like they may have, might have taken some personal offense to that fake, fake punt. <laughs> They thought they were coming off the field. I mean, they're on the sideline probably with their helmets off and sure. expecting to get a nice break. They had done their job, forced to fourth and one, and now they're back on the gridiron. Leonard comes across the formation and thought he had to hustle to get set before this play. Instead, it's the Bears making adjustments. Third and six. Throw to the outside, complete, and a first down. That one completed to Nick Watts, the six foot two target, and Lindmark, the man in coverage. Well, that's tough too, and if they're taking all their three plays to get their first downs and still moving the sticks, that's really gonna wear on the Cardinal defense in this heat. Another throw into the flat. Beautiful tackle, DJ Workenthien. He comes yeah. up the tight end, Mitchell Rowan. And that's what I mentioned about cheating those outside linebackers out a little bit so he can get there to make the play like that. Workenstein showcasing his speed there. And did you see him as soon as as soon as the ball was snapped, his first step weren't back, but they were to the outside. He was shot out of a cannon. Yes, he was. Throw almost under cup, but it is caught by Watts. Was it? Wow. Impressive. And now they're a yard away from make that two from picking up another first down. They're just methodically marching down the field right now. And like you said, in this heat, and especially in the second half, this Colonel defense could get winded in a hurry. Yeah, you gotta make sure that you're keeping especially the, the legs up front on the defensive line fresh with some good rotation. Pressure comes up the gut and stops the Bears in their tracks. Big time tackle there, I believe Cameron Martin a sophomore was one of the first men in there. Yeah, he was. He stood him up. A backup nose tackle. And now you think the Cardinals are going to be a little weary of Davidson back there to punt? I certainly would be.
Three minutes and change here in the third quarter, and we have ourselves a contest. Cardinals hit the halftime break up 22 to nothing. Wash U scored on their opening possession of the second half. Cardinals have turned the ball over three times. They've also punted once. Davidson again walks with it and then boots it away. Fair caught Kaminsky at the 13 yard line. All right, the Cardinal offense, they're clapping their hands. They need to get going. And who do you think they're gonna lean on here for maybe a spark? Well, we haven't seen much of Cam Moore in the second half here. It'd be fun to get the ball into his hands a little bit. I, for me, if I'm sputtering, I like to establish the ground game first as a coach. That's just a personal preference. You kind of get the ball rolling, you get moving, you kind of get that mojo back, and then you kind of open it up. Plus, if you can move the ball effectively, then that'll open up your passing game. Move the ball effectively on the ground, that is. Magalu gets a hole right side and bursts through it, picks up the first down. There's a nice little spark. Comes from the running back who was leaned on heavily last year in short and distant situations, but now the bell cow back, and he's looked pretty good to start this season. He sure has. First and 10, rudder back to throw. Pressure from behind, steps through it, a flag out of the pocket, and rudder brought down after a pickup of a yard and a half. Yeah, it's gonna be a hold again. Who are they gonna bring up on these charges? I didn't get a number there. No, it's uh, on the wind. Kind of the wind. Yeah. 71, that would be the left tackle, Jake Fiedler. Guilty and charged for uh, 10 yards. I got him. Some miscues by the offensive line today. False starts, some holding penalties, things they will need to iron out over the next two weeks before they meet up with the Thunder in the battle for the little brass bell. Ficus on the grab, a long throw from Rudder. Yeah, and high a little bit also. Seems like throwing with the wind has altered the accuracy of uh, Rudder here. The wind is at his back, so the ball seems to have a little bit of lift on it. Rudder again sets up the screen, this time to Greenfield, and Greenfield covered up pretty quickly on second and 11. Gain of maybe two on the play, and now a third and nine is on tap for a Cardinal offense that is really struggle to move the ball here in the second half. See, and that's the issue with incomplete passes on first and second down or short gains or what have you, or penalties versus running the ball and being able to chunk some yardage off. So now you wind up in situations where you've got to pass the football. Third and nine and a handoff to Greenfield and Greenfield picks up. Just enough yardage for the first down. Ooh, Big situations time Situations where you've got to pass the football, right? <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Grant Sable. Yeah, well, go show me, that's fine. I mean, I'll those are the on that with a big old smile. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you catch the defense thinking what you were thinking. They're gonna yeah. be throwing the football. Let's yeah. back up, let's try and create a shell. Sure, pin their ears back on the D-line and before you know it, the running back's by you. Throw to the outside, complete. Good pitch and catch for Svickis to convert a gain of six. Good, and I like these nice short routes to kind of, uh, if the ball is sailing, it minimizes the chances of it rising too much, get a little bit of confidence back. Rudder so far today, 28 of 38. Does have an interception, but certainly not his fault. That was through the hands of sure. a receiver and a defensive back right there behind him. Gain of just a few will bring up third and two. And the Cardinals may let this run down to the fourth quarter. There's only 15 seconds remaining and the offense is slowly trotting around. Let's, yeah, they're gonna let this go, I believe. Just mellow out. That's it. Third quarter has expired into the fourth they go. The Cardinals lead the Bears 22 to seven, but this second half has been extremely interesting. Cardinal offense has been very vanilla. 
Vanilla, they move the ball, but they turn it over or they punt it. They've not looked nearly as dynamic as they did in the first half. Um, we've seen some inaccuracy on the part of Rudder that absolutely didn't exist in the first half. Um, I, I think that the one consistent part of the offensive game plan is that in both halves they've been able to run the football. Although I think slightly more efficiently in the first half than now, but still, you can keep it going on the ground. As you see our game sponsors, so let's recap the scoring. In the first quarter, the Cardinals getting a 49-yard field goal from the freshman Derek Juca. They also find the scoreboard twice more in that opening quarter. Corey Hardema from 14 yards out, Andrew Kaminsky from 20 yards out, both with touchdown catches. So it was 15-0 exiting the first, and into the second we go, and Dom Mugala with the six-yard rushing score. 22-0 at the break, but then, to open up the second half, the Bears quarterback Davidson finding Jason Singer down the sideline, and that goes for 66 yards. And that's where we sit now as we go to the fourth. Third and two now, handoff with Galu, and a first down. Forward progress will give him just enough to move the chains. Yeah, beautiful little draw there. Galu, yeah, he, not being denied. No, it, he, he lowered the boom on those uh, two defenders that were coming in on him also. Throw to the outside, Sfikis makes a man miss, and up the sideline makes a second man miss, continues up the sideline, and going for the three-peat, he gets a whole lot of yak. The yards after the catch. Yards after contact also. Holy smokes. That was fun. Same exact move, too. Yeah, that's where Chris Berman would be going, whoop, whoop, yeah. and then hula hoop, hoop again. <laughs> Goes for the third hula hoop. Why not? By that time, they've caught on. Yeah. He still is able to pick up another five or six yards after that. All the way to the 26-yard line. He needs a quick breather, I think. Say, they're right in front of us right now. <laughs> First and 10. Ooh. High snap, handed off. Trick play, Cam Moore on the end around, blocking set up, and a flag flies in. Moore will fight for yardage inside the 10, but this one, I believe, will be coming back. Boy, and on a, on a play like that, a high snap is not a good thing. Those are usually timed out pretty precisely. Aside from the hold, and we'll see on the replay where that took place. That was on Alex, Alex Rose, Rose, the tight end. So let's see where he was in the formation. It should be in the middle of the field. And yeah, oh, he got yeah, Jersey. Sure did. Guilty. Anytime you see that material stretch. That's right. And and two, if if your hands are outside of the frame of the defender. You can hold all you want if you're holding the guy's breastplate and you're squared up on him. As soon as you start seeing the, the defender get outside of you or your hand outside of the frame, that's when the officials are gonna call that. Rudder sweeping out. And now takes off of the feet and gets out of bounds. A gain of five or six on the play on first and 20. Yeah, and that's a smart play there. Bears had unbelievable coverage down the field. No open receivers. Rudder doesn't take any chances. I like that. Complete blanketed in the secondary. That was a great play on the back end for the Bears defense. Yeah, and even as the defenders came up to force Rudder out of bounds, there were other safeties that rotated over the top of those receivers to take, it, take over. Look at the formation right now. They have four, essentially four safeties stretched across the field, it looks like. The extreme sag coverage on the outside by the cornerbacks. It'll be interesting to see what they roll. They're rolling to cover three. Magalu runs into his own man and dropped for a loss on the play, so third and a long ways to go. Yeah, so one of those safeties is coming up and actually acting as a linebacker. They're trying to disguise their coverage, but you can tell because he was sagged down a little bit here. It's not four straight across. Cardinals will opt for four receivers, Greenfield in the backfield. Third and 15, they need to get to the 16 yard line. 10 seconds on the play clock, an audible called by Rudder. Deep throw on the corner out to Kaminsky, brings it in. Big pitching catch. What a throw. It sure was, that was that corner route. The anticipation here.
perfect ball. It takes a lot of trust for a quarterback to make that throw. Sure. Well, and as you mentioned too now, he's looking a little bit more accurate throwing into the wind, which is strange. First no. and seven, first and goal. Across the middle, oh, ho, ho. diving attempt. Kermeens almost came up with his first career touchdown catch. It was 47, Matt Giles or Giles in coverage. Did a nice job. Trying to seal off that inner route. Second and seven now. Cardinals have looked lackluster on the offensive end in the second half. They're trying to change that theme here with two, make that 12, 27 to go here in the fourth. Handoff Greenfield. He rumbles forward inside the five. They'll mark him down at the three. Man, does he explode out of that backfield. It's a lot of fun to watch. Nice job finding the seam there, too. It was supposed to be off to the left, but there was a little bit of a cutback lane, and he saw it, was able to plant and pick up a few, few more yards. That's Coach Jeff Thorne watching on. Third and short. Hasman in the flat, goes instead across the middle. Ooh, yeah. And incomplete, Kaminsky is standing yeah, all he alone. he was there on the bubble with his hand up. It was not honored at all. Oh, they're sending out the field goal unit. Yeah, you, 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 want to, you want to get the points you can, but man, I, I would absolutely come back to that. Intended for Spickus, and on tape tomorrow night or Monday or whenever they're going to watch the film, they're going to see Kaminsky open in the flat and a missed opportunity for a touchdown. And actually, you can see Coach Jeff Thorne and Brock Rutter talking on the sideline right now at about the 25-yard line. What a great camera angle. That one is true. Splits the uprights for the field goal, and Jutka has his second three points of the day. True freshman's been good. And the Cardinals lead 25 to seven here in the fourth quarter. At least now it's not just a two score game. They've separated a little Correct. bit more, and Washu has just a little bit more ground to gain before they can try and make their way back into the contest with yeah, 49 left. And it's good, good to kind of break that seal and get some, some points in the second half, which the Cardinals have yet to do thus far with the entire third quarter scoreless. A nice long drive, shoot some time off the clock. So now the defense has to come back out onto the field, and they've been really tested here in the second, both by just the game plan put together by the Bears, but also the length and the amount of plays that this Wash U unit has run. Yeah, probably got to sit over there by the fans and get missed it on a little bit. Let's see what happened to start this second half. This is why this game became interesting in a hurry. This was the throw from Davidson to Singer. Big breakaway speed by Singer there too. Very impressive. And for the moment, that really made this game kind of a head turn. All of a sudden you're thinking, well, this could be a contest and then a fumble and then an interception. And if not for the interception by Beasley on the goal line, this yeah. could be a totally different game. Kickoff hauled in. And return to the 25 yard line. The returner, Alex Failinger. Pretty standard return here. Just getting up the gut on it. Storm Simmons on the stop, and a little ginger coming off the field, the sophomore backup linebacker. We'll throw him in the cool name category. Storm Simmons. Yeah. Sounds like a made up name for a thriller novel. <laughs> Detective Storm Simmons. I like it. Davidson back out there. First and 10, and he's hurling one across his body and incomplete. Short changes his intended target. It's a Cardinal down. One of the defensive linemen at the 20. Tough to see a number from where we sit right now with the glare from the sun. And that is Lane Brinkman. Lane Brinkman is uh, on the field and being tended to by the athletic training staff. Tonight, a 
primetime matchup between the Illinois Wesleyan Titans and the Wheaton Thunder. Oh. That game is at 7 o'clock, and the eyes of the CCIW, let alone maybe even the D3 world, will descend on Bloomington, Illinois yeah. for a big-time matchup. Absolutely. It's interesting, too, that uh, Wheaton has to play Wesleyan and North Central back-to-back. -back. Almost. There's a week in between. Oh, is there a week in between? But both road games. Yes. Davidson drops back, goes to the outside, and that is complete. And a first down. Singer again coming up with a big catch. But I, I like him. He's, he's, he's scrappy. He's big. He's strong. Very dynamic player. And he burned the Cardinals for a big game last time, over 140 yards through the air. Outside, and that's complete again. Matt Goldberg for a gain of eight. It's like they're going back to their flat attack here. Trying to wear out the Cardinal defense. Yeah, well, when you make those outside linebackers run like that. Second and three. Davidson deep over the middle again, completed to Goldberg, and he's dragged down. Tackle made by Zach Greenberg. So Goldberg tackled by Greenberg. And a nice pickup for the Bears. Carey and pinballing around the second level. Taking this down is Emmanuel Angerman. And he's close to another first down. So that was a watch nice you hard driving. run, too. They're really becoming quite a force to be reckoned with. Very determined. I would say so. Davidson again to the outside, bubble screen. And close to the first down, they get it. Nick Watts on the catch. And they're just trying to set up on the periphery and yeah, chip I, away. I, I can't speak enough to the edge blocking that I'm seeing out of the Wash U Bears. The receivers on the edge are really doing a nice job blocking for one another. First and 10 and a handoff. And Fisher brought down by the ankles. An open field tackle, impressive one by Ben Wong, the middle linebacker. Yeah, he came in there in a hurry, read that very quickly. Only a gain of two on the play. Second and eight. Hurtling around, DJ Workenthien came in there, disrupted, and the defensive line then cleans it up. That is Tommy Hyland, the transfer, who came in two days before training camp. He attended Northwest Missouri State University, came to North Central, and he's already racked up a pair of sacks in his first two weeks. Definitely somebody to keep our eyes on. He's a big dude, six foot four, 260 pounds. Likes to play on the edge, but right now playing the middle and making things happen. Third and a mile, third and 15. Davidson steps through the offensive line and does take it for a sizable game, but fourth down on tap. They'll need to pick up another four yards probably in the uh, situation of needing to go for it here. Yeah, I would say so. I would I would leave the offense out there. Now, that being said, there's a lot of onus on the North Central defense here because this is such a pivotal play. If they're able to stop them, the chances of them scoring with the time left after they get the ball back three times are not very good. Fourth and three from the 18. Big pivotal moment in this very game. Very important play. Pressure picked up, pass thrown to the outside, complete. Watts rumbling inside the 10 to the five yard line. So we're gonna keep it interesting then. And so it'll be. Greenberg on the stop, but not after Lindmark just barely gave up the catch and then couldn't convert the tackle. Really, really, really nice uh, throw through where only the receiver could have a chance at the ball. Fisher on the tote, no gain on the play. Second down and goal. 
forthcoming. Line change. Swapped out their entire receiving core. That was interesting. They're gonna stretch the Cardinals on the near side of the field and go to the far side, and that is incomplete. There was a ton of traffic right there. Yeah, I saw Wong a lot and, of hands. Yeah. Both linebackers, Workenthien and Wong, were in the vicinity. It's a dangerous throw from Davidson. Back to the action. Davidson quarterback draw, going for the end zone, and he's short. All right, back to fourth down and a yard. So roll the tape. You can say exactly what I just said about a minute and a half ago. Pivotal play yeah, coming sure. up here. This Fourth is a big down. one. Cardinal faithful getting on their feet, making some noise inside Benedetti Worldly Stadium for fourth and goal from the two. Quarterback keeper pursuit from behind. Davidson trying to capture the edge, and he's into the end zone. A touchdown. Boy, that was sheer will from Davidson. At first, I thought he was going to get chased down from behind, and then he found another gear and was able to escape that and ran through two Cardinal defenders, and it looks like maybe hurt one of them on the way into the end zone. Haverlin remains down, and here's the play. He had pursuit from behind from Workenthien and was being dragged down by Haverlin, and Haverlin remains down. Big score. And the point after forthcoming, and if they go for the two-point conversion, they can make it a 10-point game, but it looks like they've sent the kicking unit onto the field. Yeah, you've got to score three times either way. My only thought is if you go for two and convert, you're only down 10. Yeah. And a field goal would tie it, but again, you do have to score three times. Yeah. Haverlin able to walk off under his own power. That's the good news. Hopefully he's all right. Same can be said for Lane Brinkman. Hopefully he's doing all right as well. He also came out of the game in the fourth quarter. He is standing on the sidelines with his helmet on. That's a good sign. Extra point off the crossbar. No good. Remains a 12-point game. Fascinating. Watch the onside here. Yeah. We're running relatively low on time. There's only a little over seven minutes left in the contest. Have to remain heads up with that for sure. Boy, this Wash U has uh, made a game of this. Yeah, Their and, offense and is doing something. Them. Well, like I said, when, when you've got a head coach that's been there for 30 years, that's usually for a reason. If you don't do the job in D3 football or in any college football, you get canned. So, uh, you know, he's, he's bred a, a tradition of winning down there at Wash U and, and you don't win if you've got players that quit on you. And these WashU players have, have shown absolutely no quit today. You know, they could have put their heads down when it was 22 to nothing at halftime, and they didn't. They came out here firing, and they came out fighting. That's what you want to see. And then I, I am very, very happy that this team has joined the CCIW. I think that they up the general level of competition. I think that they are a, a quality school, and they echo in their, uh, their, their values, everything that the CCIW exemplifies. You know, funny enough, Coach Jeff Thorne said basically the same thing. Did he really? He did. <laughs> they added a quality team. It's, it's not just adding for the sake of adding. Here's an onside there attempt. It did that go 10 yards? I believe it did. And who recovered? I don't know what she was saying they have it. They're losing their minds over there. The officials converge at midfield. Tense moments, and WashU looks like they have it. WashU yes, has do. it. Onside kick is good. It's a beautifully ex executed onside kick as well. Recovering that was Matt Goldberg, and here's a replay of it. But I, it was not the hands team that was out there. Mm -mm. Didn't look like it. And the majority of that front line, their first two steps were backwards before they realized what was going on. Brian Bochamp was the closest to the football. That will be repped quite a bit this week, I would imagine. And I would rep it with the, 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 the general rule with kickoff is you wait to make sure the ball is kicked before you go backwards. That's why you stand sideways so it doesn't bounce off your chest. And 
you know, your eye has to be on that football in order to make sure that it is booted over your head before you start going backwards. Otherwise, you wind up in a situation like this one. Another offensive drive, deep throw and incomplete. The intended target, Goldberg, who's been very active here in the second half. He's made some big catches. He came up with that onside kick. Yeah, we've called his name quite a bit. Davidson seems to have found a groove and it's going to number 86 that's working. 7-10 remaining in our game. It's a 12-point affair, so Wash U will have to score not once, but twice if they want to try and take the lead. Throw to the outside, and again, Goldberg on the reception. He's wrestled out of bounds by Beasley at the 49-yard line. Here they go, might mark him right at midfield. Beasley holding him up and trying to get that uh, the peanut punch with the ball there and knock it loose. Gain of four, second. It should be third, third and six from right at midfield. Davidson dropped back, throw over the middle, incomplete, broken up. Textbook play from Lindmark, who's been burned a few times, but they're in coverage against Singer to a T. You could put that play on film, and that's how you'd want to teach a defensive back. Yeah, that was great, and Davidson actually got hammered as he threw that ball, too, so their two biggest offensive weapons took a beating on that play. And Davidson's going to drop back. He's going to punt this football away. Watch it. No, he's not. 6.50 to go in the fourth. Let's find out. They've done it once. They faked and converted. Yeah, well, keep an eye on the football, too, here. You could see a hard count and try and draw them off sides. Cardinals not taking any chances. It looks like they're going to play some sort of safety return. Kaminsky backing up inside the 10, and this ball is going to bounce at the one and into the end zone. Boy, another perfectly placed punt, this time just a tad too far, but Davidson has a leg and he's been punting phenomenally. I'm shocked that they punted the ball there. Still need two scores. I mean, they, you put a, 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 you have to have great, great faith in your defense in order to punt that football right there. Well, they've only given up three points here in the second half. So I sure. guess that maybe they have that going for them. Yeah, but you also need to get the ball back in a hurry. This has to be a three and out. And for the Cardinals, they need a sustained drive to try and put this game away. Yes, they do. Hand off to Magalu, and Magalu shakes free and into the second level he goes, a pickup of nine yards. Keep the ball on the ground, keep the clock moving. If you throw passes, throw them short. Make sure they're complete. Maybe pop one out there every now and again just with the weapons, but. Keep the defense honest. Sure. Yeah, that's exactly, they're, they're chewing up clock right now. They're gonna wait. And now a whistle comes in. I didn't hear what the official just said. I didn't catch it either. Well, they've got a fresh play clock. That's odd. Yeah. And they didn't use it. That's peculiar. Magalu, though, picks up the first down. So a new set of downs and about another minute and a half worth of clock that the Cardinals can waste if they keep it on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Greenfield checks in, Magalu rushes to the sideline. A very concerted effort from the Cardinals coaching staff, Thorne and Brad Spencer, to keep these running backs fresh. They've rotated them all day long in this heat. Hey, that's fantastic. If you've got three guys with not too much of a discernible difference between what each of them are gonna give you, why not? especially in this heat. Greenfield met immediately in the backfield. And on the initial hit was Derek Speltz, listed as the backup linebacker, but a big play here. Rudder Just awaits the signal. Shooting it down, yeah, yeah, you got 20 seconds left. Shoot, use it. 5.15 to go in the game. Cardinals lead by 12, and they want to try and end it here on this drive. Just let the clock go all the way down. Seven on the play clock. And the snap, quick throw to the outside, complete to Kaminsky, and Kaminsky's got room to run. Stays in bounds and also picks up the first down. That's huge. Stop the clock to move the chains and then reset it. They should burn that time down again. At the half, who would have thought that 
we'd be sitting here with five minutes to go in the game and the Cardinals would be holding on to a 12 point lead. Yeah, I certainly didn't. And hats off to Wash U for making that happen. 4.45 to go in the fourth quarter. High snap handed off. Greenfield shrugs off one would-be tackler and takes it to midfield. Man, does he have a motor. He just Again, keeps the legs churning. The, the, the first guy, he ran right through him. He, yeah. he factored not, not at all into that tackle. Look at that. Bye. Second guy, third guy, finally down. Runs with authority, that is for sure. Be fun to watch for the next four years. Second and four, right at midfield. Another handoff to Greenfield, and this time he breaks free. Upended at the 40-yard line, but not after picking up the first down. Boy, credit the Cardinal O-line for that. That was a massive hole. Let's see how they got this one done. Looks like they pulled the right guard, Nathan Gray. Yeah, a little power G there. Cardinals methodically marching down the field, trying to waste the clock and put the game away. Great job of it thus far. First and 10, and a handoff, and again, Greenfeld, Greenfield, oh, oh. just continues to churn away. Oh, 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 I love this kid. This is great. Cardinals running with a fullback, too. I'm in my, my glory here. <laughs> this is fun to watch. It's, it's just so awesome to say the lineup right across from the guy and just we're going to run the ball and we're going to assert our will and as an offensive lineman I'm going to take you as a defensive lineman and move you somewhere that you don't want to go and uh, and our running backs are going to do the rest. Another first down situated at the 24 yard line three receiver set and an H back that's Alex Rose. Another handoff and Rose falls forward for a two and a half yard gain. And this has been the most consistent aspect of the Cardinal offense all day is the running game. At what point, if you're Wash U, do you start taking your timeouts? I would, uh, I would have assumed it would have been right there. Inside of two minutes, maybe. You need two scores. Ah, uh, fair enough. Again, it goes back to that punt. You were surprised they punted. Yeah, I couldn't believe it, especially after the onside kick. Kaminsky in motion on second and eight. Play action outside, caught more. And nothing much going there. And a timeout taken on that far sideline. Yeah, they, they could have dinged Kaminsky. I thought he turned up on his motion before, uh, yeah. before that ball was snapped. Have to watch that in the coming weeks. So a timeout taken by Wash U, 2.07 to go. That is their first timeout taken of the second half. They have two remaining. If the Cardinals keep it on the ground here and don't pick up the first down, you assume, again, Wash U would take a timeout. They'd be down to one. The Cardinals would be forced to kick, make it a 15-point game, so still a two-score contest. Mm -hmm. It's still possible. I know you, there's a lot of math involved, but the Bears are certainly not out of it at this point. Yeah, they'd need a touchdown with a regular extra point and a touchdown with a two-point conversion to tie. They need two two-point conversions to win, which uh, I'd probably go for the two-point conversion right away. And then you have the decision, if you have score again, to tie and send it in overtime or go for two for the win. That's what Wesley did a few years ago. Remember that? I Yes, Oof. I do, unfortunately. Let's not evoke that right now. <laughs> Third and eight from the 22. Joe Callahan, who's playing for the Packers right now. Yes, sir. Play action, throw to the sticks, oh. complete, and that should put the game away. Caught by Sfikas. The chains will move, and the Cardinals will have first and goal with two minutes remaining. Great little route there. They love the DBs to sleep with all the, uh, the ground and pound that's been going on. So do the Cardinals even try and go for the end zone or is sure. the clock more important? No, 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 score. Make it a three score game, then it's impossible. 
Handoff and Greenfield swept off his feet at the five. I mean, if you can shoot time off while you're doing it, yeah, they're going to burn the timeouts here. I keep handing it to Greenfield. Get the kid a score. Had one last week. It looked really good doing it, too. A speed rush off the edge. But here, he's been uh, counted on to run between the tackles, and he's looked really good doing that, too. I mean, really good. Rock Rudder just broke some record, but I don't know what it was. I missed the front end of the yeah. uh, the announcement. I'm not sure what uh, what record he could have broken today. Let's see if I could get a hold of PA announcer Jim Goto here. I don't know if he'll check his phone. He's 34 of 46, 374 yards throwing, two touchdowns. None of those numbers seem overtly. 374 is a big number. It is a big number, but I feel like he had to have come close to that before. We'll see if uh, we can find out what that was, and we'll get back to you. For now, a minute 36 on the clock, second and five. Could be a career Could record, be a career I'm not record. sure. Tutty. Caught, and touchdown to Greenfield. Beautiful. That is the 35th completion of Brock Rutter's day, and that is the record. He passed Luther Selvo oh. for most completions in a game. That record was set in 1967, and he just tacked on one more. 35, and it gives the Cardinals a big-time lead to close out this ballgame. Boy, Luther Selvo is an absolute legend as far as North Central football record book was concerned prior to the Thorn era. He held everything. And then Cam Kinnis came in and broke most of those things. He was actually, I believe, on hand. I've actually met him, Luther Selvo, a class act. Uh, but he was on hand for when Cam Kinnis was, uh, was breaking the record. Always fun when those guys come around to see their records being broken. But here's the touchdown toss in Greenfield, able to turn up field and get across the goal line. Great day for him, Greenfield, and great day for Brock Rutter as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's, it's, I, you see that pretty often. And the thing is, you know, when, when you're, the, the, the coaches and the Thorns are historians. They like to tell stories about what happened here in the past and, and great players. And so when you get guys like a Luther Selvo that come around or like a Dick Blick or an Al Benedetti, that's, just, that's so cool. Like, you know, my, my senior year in 2005, we had the, the, the fortune to be the first North Central team to play in the NCAA playoffs. It was the first postseason game that North Central had since the 1946 Corn Bowl. Wow. And uh, you know, some of those Corn Bowl guys were there for that game on hand. It's just neat, very neat. The Corn Bowl? Yeah, Corn Bowl. Interesting. We, we heard a lot about the Corn Bowl because that was all, that was all that we was, had yeah. to look at. And then Al Benedetti was on that team who was our, uh, our uh, patron for, for quite some time, patron saint. Juca with a boot into the end zone. Rumbles out of play. So this is just a mere formality at this point, but a minute 30 remaining in our contest. Yeah, Jim Goto confirming that. This is the completion record Brock Rutter just set. So with his 34th, he broke the record. His 35th gave him a touchdown. And what's... And it's all said and done, it's a win. But nitpicking here, the interception that belongs to Rudder in this game certainly does not belong on his ledger sheet. No. But uh, nevertheless, it's going to be tacked on to his stat. Sure. There were a couple others that could have been picked. That's true. You know, there, was, there were a little bit of accuracy issues there in the third quarter, which he thankfully settled. But The ball don't lie is the official um, motto of a lot of basketball players. You could say that for football, too. Mm -hmm. He didn't get an interception on a few balls that maybe should have been, and of course his interception comes on a ball right to somebody. Yeah. Long completion, good for a first down. Davidson continues to try and make something happen, but this game is well out of reach at this point. And he'll slide down and get covered up right around midfield. Cardinals will move to 2-0. And they looked pretty good, especially in the first half doing it. The third quarter was a little sketchy, to say the least. 
He's putting it mildly. Yeah, a pair of turnovers. Not a lot of offense. Ooh, Defense. What a grab. Holy cow. That was Nick Sioni. Yeah. Looking to grab. Really good coverage there, and the, the ball was just placed really well, and he was able to, to go up and, and get that. Under a minute to go in the game. Davidson pump fakes, goes uh -oh. deep, and complete. Singer stretches out. Touchdown. Touchdown. Boy, Singer has, has looked good today. A little gimpy after that. If this was a NFL game, and if you had fantasy players, you called it a garbage time touchdown. Yes, you would. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantasy players, or if you're, you're betting on the game, a lot of times those touchdowns late screw with the line. Yeah. The end result is pretty much in the books, but guys are certainly playing for pride, and that's a prideful touchdown right there. It's you a drive. prideful program. Yeah. Davidson muffs the snap and runs around. Playground play right here. And Davidson wrecked. It's too often the result when you're running around like that in the backfield. Yeah. So the Bears come away with six points on that drive. It's now 32 to 19. 43 seconds remaining. I think this time the Cardinals will be more prepared for an onside kick. I'm not even sure if WashU will go for it. I would. I bet they do. You might as well, right, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, given everything I've seen out of them, there's no quitting them. They're not going to kick it away. They'll line up for that onside and boot it. Coming up on the North Central schedule, an away game at North Park a week from today. That's a 1 o'clock start time. And then two weeks from today is the Big Kahuna. Yeah. Number 12, Wheaton comes to town. Do we know who Wheaton has in between? Tonight they have Illinois Wesleyan. Illinois Wesleyan. I know that. But let's see who they have in between. Ideally, both teams would be 3-0 heading into that contest, and that sets the stage for one of the most exciting D3 football matchups of the season. Countrywide also. Yeah. Yeah, that's not just a game that locally will have interest. That's a, that's a nationally recognized game. They will have Milliken in between. Oh, that's, man, that's a brutal schedule. Illinois Wesleyan, Milliken, North Central. I think Milliken might be better than Wesleyan this year. Here's the onside kick and a big hop. Uh oh. Straight up in the air. Sficus, oh, I believe, Sficus came down it. with yeah, it. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah, that mm -hmm. hop was exactly what you want. Yeah. You know, I was actually talking to uh, that, that, that kicker 93 is the backup kicker. And uh, he is the onside kick specialist. And I was riding the elevator with his mother. Interesting. And she said, yeah, well, hopefully we might be in a position where you get to see him today. So, saw him so, twice. So there we go. And he was one for two. Sure. Proud mama, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. She was a very nice lady, very classy. Cardinals will come out in the victory formation. They'll need to snap this ball. Should be just once. Unless they take their timeout. Timeout will not be taken, and that will mark the end of our contest this afternoon. Well, this shaped up to be a pretty dramatic contest. Uh, we went to the half, and it was a relatively, well, it was a blowout. Let's be real. The, yeah. the Cardinals dominated that first half. The second half, not so much. It was the win, but not the win they wanted. No. They had to fight for it, but that's ultimately a good, free, a good thing for this team is to have to, sure, absolutely. to work for a win. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's good. And I think that uh, it speaks to the strength of Wash U and as I've said throughout the broadcast, I am just thrilled that they have joined this conference. Taking a look at this, the stats real quick, uh, Rock Rodder, 35 of 47, sets the program record for most completions in a game with 35. Uh, 379 yards, three scores, and in a, in a game where in the second half there really wasn't much going offensively, that's a pretty good effort from your starting quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. And then defensively, you have guys working across the field. Defensively, it was the linebackers making the most impact. Uh, DJ working theme, 14 tackles. Uh, wow. Tackle for loss, and uh, he was everywhere. Yeah, he sure was. Plus, when they keep throwing those outs, and he's got to run out there and make that play, and then it's DJ working theme, so he does. The only other player I, I feel like maybe deserves the biggest spotlight is uh, Jake Beasley. Two interceptions, Ooh, putting that how do you not? crucial one on the goal line. And, and another one that should have been. Right, could have had three. Yeah. 
So That's definitely a candidate for the player of the week, defensive I would player say so. of the week, sure. So exiting this game, Grant, uh, thoughts on where this Cardinal football team stands? Um, this was good for them. This was a, a, a good good game. It was a good opponent. Um, I think that uh, it exposed some, some weaknesses and some things that they need to work on where if you don't have a quality opponent like this, you don't know that. And then you, you meet up with a Wheaton or a Wesleyan or a Milliken or whoever. You Garthage. get shocked. Yeah, and, and you get exposed. So it, it's good that they get this. They get this on film. They can get into the lab tomorrow, the coaches, and then on, on Monday uh, break it down with the players and, and straighten some things out. Next week, a road trip to North Park, a quick one to Chicago to take on the Vikings, and then we'll be back here on your airwaves for the Battle for the Little Brass Bell. That's on September 29th at 7 o'clock. Make sure to mark that down on your calendars. That's been circled on mine for about a year. Yeah. Can't wait for that one. But I uh, want to thank our entire team today. It's a fantastic production. want to thank our game sponsors as well. The Cardinals take a win 32-19 over Wash U. Moving to 2-0 on the season. And we'll see what happens next with this Cardinal team that has national title expectations. Thanks for tuning in to this NCTV 17 production of Cardinal Football. Alongside Grant Sabo, I'm Kevin Jackman saying so long. We'll see you in two weeks for a game under the lights against Wheaton right here on NCTV.